<laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. This evening is our spotlight stream, where we like to go over games that are just coming out into the picture. A uh, big part of that is games that are going on to Kickstarter, currently on Kickstarter, and tonight we will be featuring Gruff Rage of the Trolls, currently live on Kickstarter, successfully funded in nine hours, so congratulations to them for that. Uh, quick intro, though. Who are we? I'm Matt, and I'm joined here with... Anne. And Brent from Gruff Rage of Trolls. Say hi, Brent. Hi, folks. So first we'd like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are sponsored by Gruff Rage of the Trolls, so big shout out to them. Josh, if you could post the link to the Kickstarter in chat so everyone can go check that out while we're doing this. So, Brent, how are you doing today? <laughs> doing real good, doing real good. Yeah, we launched the Kickstarter campaign yesterday and it was a huge explosive start to the campaign. Did really, really good, we got funded, and we just killed our first troll today. So we have a troll uh, stretch rolls. So we had our first stretch troll get a get his butt kicked today. So stretch that troll. So we need to add another boss fight to the game. That's super cute. And you said uh, earlier when we were kind of uh, hanging out, you mentioned that you had funded in eight hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, we got funded real quick this time around. So uh, yeah, real quick funding, and then we we hit our first stretch goal. At 150% funded just today, so, That's so awesome. it's been, uh, been moving at a super brisk pace. Very, very cool. Congratulations. So this is an expansion module, correct? Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, all of the Gruff games are actually completely self-contained sets, mm -hmm. so you don't actually need any of the previous games to play. So uh, all you need to do is be able to pick up the one game of, of Gruff, whether it's Gruff or Clash or Rage the Trolls, and it, it comes with everything you need to play. But it's also compatible with our other games, so you can use the trolls, uh, goats, and shepherds that you get out of range. You can play with Clash and Gruff. Very cool. And yes, tonight we will be featuring uh, Gruff itself, at least for the first game. Are we going to be doing any mix ins with the other ones, Josh, or are we uh, just doing Gruff off, this evening? We're starting off all of Rage of Trolls, but we're playing in a tr traditional 1v1, that's the Gruff style. Okay. So, uh, Brent, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the new thing in Rage of the Trolls is a co-op mode, really, that allows you to work together. Yeah, that's right. So you can you can fight the trolls either single player or you can actually fight them with a, with a friend. You can team up to try to take a, take a troll down with a compete trio. It's too so, bad I don't have any friends here. <laughs> <laughs> Frenemies is Frenemies. a thing too, right? Yes. There. So, Brent, you want to give us a little bit of backstory of this game? What is the the, the flavor behind it? Yeah, so uh, the idea is that once upon a time, the three really goats grow up, and they're trying to cross a bridge when they got stopped by this horrible troll that wanted to eat them. Well, the goats outsmarted the troll and knocked him off the bridge and killed them. And when that happened, it basically triggered a mutated goat, weaponized goat arms race. So, <laughs> you, so uh, using black magic and foul science and forbidden breeding practices, you made the meanest, weirdest, fattest goats that the world has ever seen, and it basically drove the trolls to the brink of extinction. And now the trolls have returned, and their rage is going to shake the foundations of the universe. So all the world enemies have got to set the differences aside, team up, and try to take down the trolls together. I love it. That's fantastic. Uh, so, Andy, do you have any questions for him before we started getting into the rules explanation there? Um, no, I don't think so just yet. Okay. Uh, so, Brent, do you want to go over the rules, or do you want me to I want to hear from them? Brent. I mean, you know, I'm sure you'll be a little bit more efficient at it than I will. Yeah, uh, great, absolutely. Uh, so, the first thing that you need to do is you choose three goats and a shepherd. So we're going to show off uh, one of the goats here in the... We have a little overlay cam on the side here. So we can give a little bit of... No, Josh, you didn't put the card cam on. So we have a little card cam here, so we're going to be able to show a close-up and personal shot of one of the goats here. Josh ever turns it on. <laughs> so while they are uh, getting the card cam to work, a uh, little thing that we were discussing before... Uh, because we record these with the intention of showing them to a very an audience with varied board game experience, we like to approach this game games in general with different levels of familiarity. So, <clears throat> Josh is our rules lawyer. 
He goes through all of the rules of the game beforehand. He then in turn explains that to Matt. He and Matt might play a round or two before we start coming on the show. And then I come on completely clueless. <laughs> Yay! Uh-huh. And do a bang up job and usually wind up beating me. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what? I do. Uh, but it's. For those of you that have never seen a game, never seen the game, or don't play a lot of board games, you'll be following along with me. And that also gives you guys a great idea of just how easy a game is to pick up out of the box and delve into. So this is one, we have one of the goats here. This is Squat, and we have him displayed. Uh, I've got the left half of it displayed. I'm not showing off his fat stat on the right, but uh, this is an example of what you're going to see with the individual goats that you have. Love the art. So, Brent, what are these stats? I see we have mean, we have weird, and we have fat. Yeah, all the goats, so we've got three stats of mean, weird, and fat. Mean is the amount of damage that a goat will do when uh, he attacks. Uh, fat is how much damage you can bounce off from going to your shepherd. Basically, all the goats are always in a defensive sh- uh, position trying to protect the shepherd. And weird is how quickly that goat will drive your shepherd crazy, which is super bad. It makes it hard for your, your shepherd to maintain relationships with significant others, hold out a job, but in goat battles, it's totally awesome. So uh, if each uh, goat comes with a deck of ability cards, and in the upper left-hand corner of each of those cards, there's a number in a purple circle that indicates how crazy your shepherd needs to be. Is that that's what the weird score does. So that, it, this, hey, it hey, makes hey. your shepherd crazy, and crazy lets your uh, shepherd play cards. So this is an example of one of those cards. This one would cost four of those crazy points to use. Yeah, that's exactly right. So if your Shepherd Sick, for example, had five crazy, you could play Deathless and you could play another card that costs one. So you can play as many cards as you want as long as the total cost of all the cards doesn't exceed your crazy score. Pretty simple. And your crazy score is cumulative, correct? It does not go down when you use it? Yeah, that's right. Crazy is forever. (laughs) Same time. We want to show off one of the shepherd cards. So, so yeah, we have uh, one of the shepherds here. This is the one that Anne will be using. This oh. is Brat, because Anne is... An angel. <laughs> Funny story about Brat. Brat actually was a reward for the world championship winner uh, at last year's Gen Con uh, for growth. Really? Uh, yeah, her name was Brat Conway, so we made a, made a shepherd named after her. And That's... it's kind of built up for design. And that's what we've got. So that's Brad. That's really cool. <laughs> so uh, here, yeah, so all the goats or all the shepherds have got two. They've got a life scat dot, and they have a crazy stat. We talked about crazy a little bit already. It's how your uh, your shepherd is going to play cards, and your life dot is just indicates how long you're in the game. If your life gets to zero, then you're you're dead, and the game is over. And uh, for shepherd to get zero life is is out of the game. Now a lot of shepherds, perhaps not one of them, but a lot of them will have a little white bar on their health bar, and that's called a threshold. And some of the, the shepherds have abilities will trigger when your life drops below a threshold. Yeah, like Baba Aga over here. Okay. When life drops between three and four, then she throws a bunch of these uh, nasty press fermentation tokens on all the, all the other goats in the game. Kind of like a berserk mode? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a, it's a trigger. So like, you take some damage, but you're like, yeah, I took damage, but I still feel good about it because I got to do this terrifying thing. That's the so. shepherd that you're playing? Yes, it is. That's a very appropriate character for how you play. I mean, I'd like to think that me and her look somewhat similar as well. So, you know. You need the hoop earrings. <laughs> I left those in my car, there you unfortunately. Alright, and we're each playing with three goats. Uh, and how does the actual attacking uh, mechanism work? Wait. Can I back that up? Yeah, sure. You said that you were playing with three goats. How do I know which goats I'm playing with? So is this at, are they at random that I've gotten these goats? Uh, no, at the beginning of the game, you, uh, you can either come to the game with your goats already pre-picked. Like, I've got a copy of the game, and my friend has got a copy of the game, and I've got my favorite goats. Or you can draft them. So everyone can take turns picking goats and, uh, and creating a team on the fly. Okay, I like that. Okay, so... Oh, do, would you rather draft? We could draft as well. Well, no... Yeah, I mean, if you guys have already pre-drafted, 
The goats. No, you know what? It's going to knock me. It's going to run me into analysis paralysis. This is probably not very good for streaming, watching me sit there and examine stats on six goats. So from what I see with these goats, it looks like there are three separate uh, types, clans here. Or there's actually four separate ones here. Uh, it looks like you have your more attack centralized ones, such as the Squabble and Briggs, and those are of the Grendel class. Uh, you have your utilitarian ones, which seem to be the Funk Fiends, where they give you more weird and more status buffs as for the actual cards themselves. And then for at least the Skull Clan, that looks like your defense goat. Um, I'm sensing something similar from the Deep Thing as well, the Screecher and the Squat. Yeah, uh, Screecher is definitely an offensive goat. Uh, so is Squat. Um, their factions themselves have got different things in common with them. And there's actually five factions in the game. There's one faction that's not in range the trolls, the contractions, and it's robot goats. Uh, they were uh, heavily represented in Clash of the Goats. Oh, right are so right you so, uh, sad as an engineer that you don't get to play with the robot goats? I'm sad as an engineer whose last name means goat that I don't get to play with robot goats. <laughs> Yeah. I did not know that. This, yeah. is, uh, this is perfect. <laughs> My um, family yeah, crest so, is a goat standing on a hill. Uh, this is. So, what so you notice much. though is that each of the goats kind of has a different specialty. Like, Mr. Blight and Thump are definitely utility goats, and they're going to focus on making sure that that team gets really, really crazy really fast. Uh, Swallows and Briggs, on the other hand, are your damage dealing goats. And so, they. Uh, um, they're gonna focus on damage output, and then Screecher and Squat are your defensive goats. So, uh, what we like to call them is mean, weird, and fat. So, you've got uh, Briggs and Swallows as your mean goats, Bump and Mr. Blight as your weird goats, and Screecher and Squat as your fat goats. If you want a really balanced team, and that might be actually a really good way to go on this, you just want to pick one mean, one weird, one fat. Uh, these are a little bit more uh, more push teams that are gonna kind of do more eccentric things. So, whichever way you want to go is actually fun. So I'm going to leave it as this. Anne's going to have a more attack-centralized one. I'm going to have a weirder orientation, which is how I lost to Josh before, but I, I want a redemption arc, a personal redemption arc I'm here. really mean, and you're really weird. So I think that this And is we're both equally fat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the next thing that you want to do is uh, choose Shepherds if you haven't done it already. But uh, I would definitely recommend taking Brat with... Uh, um, the squabbles and breaks team. Okay, so uh, I. It's gonna be more crazy. I got Brat and I have Briggs, Squabble, and Screecher. And I'm playing as Baba Haga and I have Mr. Blight, Thump, and Squat. So, so who's going first? So. Now, the next thing you want to do is take a look at the, uh, the decks of cards that each of the goats brings. There's a, there's a bunch of cards, which will have the pictures of those goats on them. Now, for your first time playing the game, what you want to do is look at the bottom right corner of each of those cards, and you notice there's a little star. Those are recommended starting cards. So ah, just pick okay. all the cards that have the star, and then, then you've got your deck and you're ready to play. We have them all pre-sorted already, Anne. Hey, how about that? You guys did something right. So oh, they're numbered, too. That's really cool. 12 of 15, 11 of 15. I like that. So we're going to mix all of those individual goat decks together into one deck for our shepherd, correct? Yep, that's correct. Oh, okay. Uh, so add my little mini over there? Yeah. That's the first player deck. That's Captain. He does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's the determining factor of who goes first? Uh, you know, it's a... One way to do it is whoever's touched the goat last. So... Confession time. I go first. I went to a petting zoo on Sunday, and there was a goat there. No. Oh, whatever. I mean, you can just touch him now. I don't want to touch him. He's, a, he's I don't blame you. Yeah. But, and I, I do have a present for you. What do you have a present for me? Ah! Well, that was really loud. <laughs> Listen, guys, I haven't been in front of the camera in about a week. I'm a little rusty, so I, I hope you guys can be patient with me. Um, I see a quick reference guide, which makes me super happy because... She likes quick reference guides. Yes, I have ADD, which impacts your short-term memory, which makes it very difficult for me to uh, try and remember all the things and also try and play the game. So quick reference guides are super helpful for me. Thanks. I'm kind of the same way. That's why 
make sure that I have them in the games. Virtual high fives. Okay, so explain to me one more time. Like we've kind of gone through the going through the rules, the overview. What is the turn order? No. What is the objective of the game? You and I are going PvP. Yeah, I'm gonna blow yeah. you up. No, you're not. But that's cool. You can dream all you want. Dream a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So whoever kills the other shepherd first wins the game. Okay, and when we're setting, when you're setting up your goats, I notice that you have circles around certain numbers. So those are your goats' starting stats. Yep, good call. And the same thing with the shepherd. Some players, so they loop around the numbers um, on those circle values. Awesome. Ready? Oh, I did it. <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> you're welcome, man. <laughs> we're patient with Matt and Matt. Not so much. Yeah. Oh, uh, here. Oh, I'm shuffling this for you? Yes. Ask away. <laughs> Ask the rest of the questions. Okay, so let's, uh, Brent, let's go over turn order. So the last person to touch a goat, so Matt's been touching himself, he'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. That's good. That's good. I like this story a lot. Um, okay. So let's, let's do setup before we go through all the turn order. Okay. The first thing that uh, the first player will do is he'll set up all of his goats on those uh, three positions that you've got there. Um, right. Is it any specific right order? Uh, the uh, first player can set up his goats however he or she chooses. And just like that, and position matters a lot. Uh, but the good news is, as second player, you can see where he set up all of his goats and set up your goats in response. So you're actually in a better position that way. Okay, so as second player, what things should I be thinking about? What do I need to take into consideration when deciding where to set up my goats? Well, you, what you want to do is make sure that your meanest goat, the one that you feel like is going to be the biggest threat the soonest, is lined up against his weakest defender. His weakest? The skinniest goat. My skinniest goat, yes. Okay, so that yeah. would be my squabble. Well, my squabble's got a max meanness of 10, and I feel like he's going to be the meanest. So I'm going to put it in this spot right here. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's a great call. Okay. So what else? So when I'm placing my second goat, what thought should I have? Well, if your second goat, and I can't see right now, it is a uh, stretcher. Uh, oh, breaks. Okay. So um, I I really like the idea of putting your defensive goat, like Screecher, in the middle of the board, so he's got easy access to the other two positions in case he's attacked in a place that he can't see. Okay. So it's always a good choice. Uh, Mr. Blight is another actually really fragile goat. Squad is going to get really big really fast. So uh, Briggs being on the side just like that is a really good option as well. Why would you ever decide to put one of the goats in these back positions? Goats don't go in those back positions, so you That's would do that. that if you don't know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> You'll put your uh, shepherd in the middle uh, back? You know, your shepherd goes in the, the middle position right there. Did you make the game, Joshua? Stop it. Did you? Okay. So, I'm sorry, Brent, that Joshua rudely interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, so you put your, uh, your, your your deck on one side of the shepherd and your discard pile will go on the other side. Thank you, Vanna! <laughs> <laughs> um, how many cards are we drawing to start out? Uh, you draw five cards for each shepherd. Oh, I have a hand, okay. One, and two. we're going to be drawing a card at the start of our turns, respectively, but I'm not going to be drawing a card at the start of my first turn, correct? That's, that's right, yeah. Okay. Good thing. That and balances out you going It first is time. worth noting that your goat only attacks the goat directly in front of it. Okay. So all of the damage that goes beyond, all of its mean that goes above the defending goat's fat mm -hmm. is bounced off to your shepherd, and that's how your shepherd gets damaged. When I make an attack? If yes, you would, it bounces If you attack, off. Yes. you would declare your attack. Mm -hmm. You don't attack yet. I have a reactionary turn, my turn, to move stuff around if I want to, play stuff, and then when it bounces back to your turn, at the beginning of your turn, you resolve your attack as your first action, and that's at the beginning of the turn order card. So after yep. you resolve your attack, then you're going to remove any conditions from play, draw your card, activate one of your goat's abilities, so each goat has a unique ability. Play your card and then do a tactical action, which is either sw uh, move one of your goats to an adjacent position, attack with your goat, grow your goat. And what is grow? Grow just means you can add one to any one of the three stats 
on the act of healing. And then finally, resurrect, which I'm assuming is bring one of your dead goats back to life. Right. And one thing to note about there is that all of these tactical actions happen with the one goat that you picked to take the turn, the one active goat. Now, in the case of resurrect, it's the active goat that's basically put res- a dead goat on your team. Okay, so Josh and I were playing that wrong before, and he was able to trounce me, and this makes a little bit more sense to me. <laughs> what is the difference? Yeah, if you don't follow those rules, it can get really unfair really fast. Yeah. <laughs> what is the difference between this turn order quick thing and this turn order quick reference guide? Uh, the, the turn order, uh, the small turn order is one I think you should use in a one-on-one game. Okay. And it's the uh, reference card that came with Flash the Battle Goats. The bigger one is uh, for fighting trolls. Yeah. Okay. And it explains how the trolls behave in the cats. That works. And in addition to the rules. So the last thing I want to point out is you can only acti- activate one gruff per turn, and you cannot reactivate it until all of your available gruffs have been activated once, correct? Yep, that's absolutely right. Ooh. So at the beginning of your turn, you're going to choose to activate one of your goats. And let's go ahead. Uh, you want to go ahead and do that now? So, um, and do you want to... So, uh, are you going first, or how are you going first? Matt's going I'm first. I'm going first, and I'm going to activate Thump. So his, yeah, act- his here? activation is plus two weird, mm-hmm. and plus one mean. So I'm doing that now, so I'm upping his weird by two and upping his mean by one. Because why? Because that's what the activation says to do. Yep. Uh, most of the goats have got a special rule on the side of them that indicates something that happens. Uh, frequently, it's something that happens on activation, and that happens immediately as soon as you activate the goat. So Thumb says he gets two weird when activated and one mean when activated. Uh, the, the goat in the middle there, the big fat skull fan goat, he gets one fat when activated, or any time his shepherd takes the Okay. And uh, Mr. Blight gets uh, a weird when activated, and he also gets a weird anytime you play a mutation. So part of the trick for your deck is to play a lot of mutations really quickly to get Mr. Play really big and not be afraid of taking some damage uh, because it'll buff up your tech. Right. So since I have now got the plus two weird on Thump and I activated him, I'm now going to add that weird to my crazy? Yeah. Uh, as soon as you activate it, go after you've added the stats, then you add that code's crazy to your show. Uh, or I think it was weird to show crazy score. So I'm going to up my crazy by two, so I'm at three crazy now. And the crazy is essentially my uh, pool that I'm going to be able to use to play my cards here. Yep, that's exactly right. Hmm. Well, there's some interesting ones here. Um, I'm going to... Let's see. I'm going to play Slippery Slime on Squabble. And Slippery Slime is mutate any gruff. The mutated gruff deals minus one damage on its attacks. When the mutated gruff resolves an attack, destroy this mutation. So so basically on Squabble's next uh, attack, he's going to do minus one damage to go away. But since I played a mutation, I am now going to add plus one weird to Mr. Blight. Yep, that's absolutely right. And you notice that when you play uh, Slippery Slime, it's not going to cause Baba Haga's crazy score to drop at all. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, when you play a card, it doesn't cause the crazy score to drop. It's just a limit to you how you can play in your turn. Right. So I would technically still have two crazy to play if I wanted or could. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not going to. So that ends that part of my turn. So then I am going to do a tactical action, and my tactical action is... I'm going to increase squats. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack with thumb. I'm gonna attack with thumb. Yeah, attack with thumb. Now you wouldn't actually be able to use your tactical action to grow anyone besides thumb. Oh, that's right. Uh, you can okay. only use your tactical action on your own to go. But I actually think that attack with thumb is a great idea. Squabbles has got a jack for defense. Okay, so I'm attacking with thumb. So I scoot him to the center of the board there to indicate that. That's exactly right. Okay. Now, so, if the attack resolved as is because Squabbles has zero defense because it's fat score of zero, um, it would kill Squabbles. You'd flip that goat over, and then all the damage would go over to Fat, so Fat would take the damage. Okay. 
So it does not go through immediately. It's going to go through the next time it circles around to my turn. So that ends my turn and is now your turn, Anne. So you start out by drawing a card. This is this is not a very good position to start off in. Okay. I know you got this. I I will be here. <laughs> okay. You you've got him to help you now too. <laughs> so. so. Go over your thought process, and don't be afraid. So, close your eyes. Okay. Okay. I'll just move, turn my head. That works. So I'm pretty sure that this is the only card in my hand that I am able to play. Yeah, that's a really good first turn play, so I highly recommend it. Now, you notice that that, uh, that card has the art of one of the goats on it? Yes. Yeah, that art doesn't matter once that card is in your deck. You can play that regardless of which goat is active. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is activate a gruff, right? Because I drew my card, right. now it's activate a gruff. I have an idea that I want to play this card, but I could activate any gruff that yeah, I can. wanted However, to. If you activate, uh, if you activate Briggs, you won't get any crazy on your shepherd, so you wouldn't be able to play that card. So you probably want to play Riptide as somebody that can get a little bit of crazy on your shepherd. Explain to me again what I'm thinking about to get crazy on my shepherd. Your weirdest goat. When you activate a goat, you gain crazy on your shepherd equals that goat's weird score. Okay, so then I'm going to want to activate Squabble, who has a weirdness of two. Yeah, that's a good call. So, um, I turn so, it... Yeah, you turn sideways. Uh, I get plus one mean when activated, so his mean goes up to two. Now, I also have an incoming attack on Squabble, and I think that that attack is going to kill him, so I feel like that's something I should keep in mind. Yeah, you're going to probably want to move him out of the way, but the first thing you're going to want to do is add two crazy onto your Shepherd. So right now, you're uh, because Squabble's weird score is two, you just activated him, now you're going to add uh, his weird score to your Shepherd's crazy score, and you're going to have three total crazy to play with this turn. Okay, so that gives me a little bit more to work with. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this is good. So, go away. No. Close your eyes. No. So I feel like that's probably a good card to play right now. I kind of like it. Let's see. Um, can you, uh, can you move this up for just a second? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you've got actually a bunch of really good options there. Do it. Yeah, make it happen. Okay, so I think that in, I'm going to use... I'm going to play my Zippy card on Squabble, which means when you play this card, the active Gruff... Which is Squabble. Which is Squabble. Place, uh, swaps places with an allied Gruff. When this card fades, draw a card. So do I swap the places now? Yep, you should do. Okay, so I could probably switch that with Screecher? Yep, go ahead. And the Slippery Slime's going to carry with it. So you want to move that over. Yep. Okay. Um, so I and put... And Zippy will just kind of sit there on the side for a little while. Okay. So Zippy is what we call a condition card. There's three different types of cards in the game. There's action cards, condition cards, and mutation cards. Okay. Mutation cards are kind of like a uh, slippery slime right there. You'll play them and they'll stay in play for the rest of the game or until the end of the game we remove some from, from play. Uh, Zippy, on the other hand, is a condition card that will last for one full turn. And sometimes that affects when they leave to play at the beginning of your next turn, like Zippy does. I think Zippy lets you draw a card, right? Uh, when this card fades, draw a card. So how do I know when the card fades it'll be next turn? At the beginning of your next turn. Okay. Yep. When a, when a card leaves play naturally, basically without any card destroying it, <laughs> it's considered to have faded, and then those triggers a lot of results. That's actually a brand new mechanic with this version of the game. Oh. Okay. Something new in Rage of the Trolls. Awesome. Um, now I still have one more weird that I can use. Yep. So I think I'm going to play the card that we discussed. Yeah, Briggs is about to be. You have another one. What do you put? What is that? So this is when you play this card, choose a gruff other than Briggs. Uh-huh. 
When this card fades, the chosen gruff gets plus one mean. Ooh. Um, Brick starts out with one. My mean has to do with my attack. My big... I should work on the goats that I expect to be mean, so I would want to yep. play this on um, Squabble. Yep, good call. Okay. When this card fades... The chosen gruff gets plus one mean. So next turn, I would resolve both of my cards. And I'll get plus one mean for squabble, and I'll get to draw an additional card. Yep. Okay. That works exactly right. So then... So wait. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so now you've used all of your crazy, and yep. so you'll move on to a tactical action. So I can either move, attack... Grow or resurrect. I don't have anybody that I need to resurrect. Resurrect. Um, you already moved. Already moved. For free. For free. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't use your tactical action. Uh, so I can grow or resurrect. So or thumb, attack. Or attack. But I have to declare my attack, and then next turn, that's when I get the attack. Correct. So, and right now, what I have incoming is an attack from Thump. On Screecher. Yep, but you're already blocking it. Screecher's got two fat, and the only has one move. So Do I lose my it. fat? What's that? Do I lose my fat when I get attacked? Nope, fat's forever. <laughs> has been for me since college, at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do like the idea of kind of buffing up my goats. But you what? can also attack because you have two mean right now. Yeah. And I only have one fat there. But when I attack, then I'm going to have to keep in mind the slippery slime. And I get minus one damage on my attack. But that's the only way to get this mutation off of me is to get rid of that. So then I would be one at What wins, defense or attack? On attack tax. wins. So if it's a tie, it will kill squat. Oh. Um, and note your shepherd's ability. My shepherd's ability is whenever one of your attacks is fully blocked, Brat gains one crazy. So if you were to attack me and I beat you out, my fat was higher than your mean, you would actually gain plus one crazy, even though your attack was fruitless. Yeah, basically Brat always likes to be on the attack. Okay, so... Uh, the next question then that I have has to do with how the cards are resolved. I also have Briggs Battle on it, which would increase my mean by plus one. So would I, would my Briggs Battle Bleat offset the Slippery Slime? Uh, no, it wouldn't because you actually deal damage before conditions fade. So you'll deal your damage, and then Briggs' Battle Bleed will go away, and then you're going to get extra extreme. So unfortunately, Briggs' Battle Bleed is going to trigger too late. Work this through with me one more time. The conditions fade after I attack, but the conditions that he currently has is minus one damage, but plus one mean. So would I go, my, would my mean increase from two to three, and then I have a damage reduction of one for the attack, or... No. So what's going to happen is you'll attack, mm -hmm. and Slippery Slime is currently giving you a minus one to your damage. Correct. Uh, so you're going to be attacking for one. Your okay. attack will resolve. It'll connect on the squad or whoever to go to in the position opposite this. And then um, that Slippery Slime will go away because the attack is resolved. Then you'll move into your conditions resolution phase. Then Bruce okay. Battle League will go away, and you'll be able to add one Plus more mean onto squabbles. Okay. So I do want to attack Squat, so I'm declaring my attack. Boo. Yay! Good call. Go Good to call. Man. As soon as you declare your tactical action, your turn is immediately done. You don't actually need to like wait for your opponent to pass priority. As soon as the uh, tactical action is declared, it's your turn. Okay. So my turn, I draw my card at the beginning. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I, I resolve my attack first. So Thump is going to attack Screecher. I have one mean. She has two fat, so I lose. So what happens to your goat? Nothing? That's it? Nothing. Yeah, no, goats don't, um, like, Screecher doesn't deal damage back just because it got attacked. Only the attacker deals damage. Okay. 
Uh, so now I will be drawing my card. Do and you rotate your goat back? No, it's only after I activate all three of them. Oh, okay. The yes, rotation was that. for the activation of the goat. Yep. Um, so now I'm going to activate squat. And by activating squat, he gains plus one fat. And I'm going to gain plus one crazy because he has one weird. So I now have four crazy. And I am going to play take heart. And take heart is when you play this card, you may destroy a condition or mutation card. So I'm going to destroy Big Briggs's Battle Bleed. What? So you don't get that. And then I am go I'm going to choose Squat to receive plus two defense. So does that get added to my fat, or is that something different? Uh. The plus the plus the two defense. Chosen graph gets plus two defense. So that's a condition card. So you're going to choose a goat, probably a goat that's being attacked, and it can act as a temporary uh, defense boost while that card is in play. Okay, so it's a temporary fat boost, and that's going to be until the beginning of my next turn, essentially. Yeah, it's a defense boost rather than a fat boost. So um, something to note is that like fat gives you defense, but a card that gives you defense doesn't move your fat slugger. Gotcha. Okay. And which... Go, did you activate? Uh, I activated squat. Okay. And so after that, uh, that's going to go on squat, so I'll make sure to take that off at the beginning of next turn. And then since squat is activated, I am going to attack with him. There you go. So we have a head-to-head -head goat battle going on right now. <laughs> and then... Brutal, brutal counter play with, that, uh, with removing that Bruce's battle for you. That was, that was pretty harsh. He's a jerk. <laughs> He's a jerk. Okay, so then because you've done your tactical action, it's now my turn. You resolve your attack first. So my attack was two mean minus one damage is one damage against... Two fat. Two fat? Four. But Four don't defense. you take... Four heart. and plus two defense. So I'm okay. Okay, so how does this work with the bouncing back of damage? Uh... It's, Nothing. It just acts as temporary fat. So at the beginning of my next turn, that goes away. So it's a temporary fat increase. Yeah. I bulked up for the winter. I attacked yeah, you. You're not, you're, you're I you're just not going to be able to do any damage to the shepherd. Before. Okay, all right. Sorry. I wasn't sure if the damage came back to my shepherd. So oh, no, no, no. Um, now that I've done my attack, you can take your ugly, slippery slime. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. It looks like your face. Uh, and now my uh, shepherd brat has a special condition. Whenever one of your attacks is fully blocked, which is what it was, I get plus one crazy, which moves my crazy counter from three to four. It's very appropriate for me. Uh, also, your, uh, your zippy card. Yes. So now I get to resolve zippy. So with this card fades, and I get to draw an additional card. Do, 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 do. So now in my draw, so this is my one card from Zippy. This is my one card from draw a card. Now I get to look at what I've got going, what? Your other goat, what's its ability? Which one? The one on the Grendel. Card. Plus one mean when one of your can do, oh, hey, look at you, Grendel. What, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at that, it's Briggs. I'm this looking is why at we the, keep Josh around. So Briggs has a condition that says plus one mean when one of your conditions fades. Is that for anybody? Well, I mean, it was. Uh, yeah, it's for whenever one of your conditions fades. Okay. So if he plays a condition like when take heart fades, it's not going to bump up Briggs. But uh, it definitely does when Zippy fades. Awesome. So his mean goes from one to two. Ooh. Yay! Okay. So my crazy counter is currently at four, but that can change depending on who I activate. Um, look quickly at what I get. Uh, I have, ooh. Joshua. Joshua. That's not yours. Don't play with it. There, I gave you a little, the, the current player token. He's very cute. When he plays 
What what are fury tokens? Uh, so there's a, a stack of tokens that came in range of the trolls. On one side of them it says Fester, and on the other side it says Fury, and it's basically a mutation that comes into play. <laughs> so how would I play a Fury token? You just put it on a goat. Okay. So, and the Fury token says the mutated gruff deals plus one damage on its attack. So you're going to give that to me, right? Nope. You know, it was worth a shot. It was. I'm really proud that you're really stepping out and trying to do something new. I think that I am going to activate... I think I'm going to activate Screecher. What do we think about this, Brent? Uh, I think that that's a good idea, because Screecher's going to give you a little bit of uh, crazy... And, uh, and so it's probably a good call. Well, he's also, got Screechers. Screechers. So Screechers got zero weird. It's gonna up one right now, though. Why? Right? His oh, up, because it's one plus one fat and plus one weird when activated. So his fat's gonna go up by one. His weird's gonna go up by one, and then and you're gonna take his weird total and add it to your crazy. So your crazy's gonna go up by one now as well. Listen, I'm a lunatic. This is really appropriate. And we knew. Okay, so this gives me a pretty nice bank on what to deal with. It's okay. I see how it is. Um, okay, so I'm going to play Bristled Defiance, which is two, worth two points. Choose any Gruff, it gets plus two defense. When this condition fades, draw a card. Oh. I'm going to put that on Squabble since he is in line to get attacked. And then I still have three points. Remember to exhaust creature when you activate it so that you know not to use him again. Sorry. I guess you could say that that was exhausting. You're a dork. Uh, if an ally, close your ears. I need, I need, they're really big. So, so if an allied gruff attacks while this card is in play, it loses two fat. If it does, it gets plus two mean. Oh yeah, I totally want to play that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to play that on Screecher. Okay. And he'll lose two fat. So he's going to be a pretty terrible type probably for a long time. Uh, but he's going to attack for five. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that's going to have a really hard part day. Okay, so... What is that? Oh, oh but I can't... Uh, so, okay, so I don't move my counters just yet because it needs to yeah. attack. So I, I will read it for you. I'm really good at reading. Mm. I use smart. Uh, if an allied graph attacks while this card is in play, it loses two fat. If it does, it gets plus two mean. So I'm going to play Ravenous on Screecher, and I am going to declare that I'm going to be attacking Thump. Okay. okay. And now, as soon as you declare your attack, yes. uh, Ravenous' trigger is going to go off, and uh, it's going to get two more mean and then lose two fat. So his mean now goes up to four. Five and the fat goes to one. I'm really skinny. He went on a diet. Lovely. An angry diet. <laughs> a very angry diet. <laughs> very he didn't angry get diet. to eat a lot, so it made him hangry. Oh, this is good. That's the hangry card. Okay. So you are it's attacking. Too late to rename it. I can just rename it. <laughs> it's not out yet. <laughs> so it can be done. <laughs> So, so that ends your turn. Yes. Uh, begin, it's my turn. I'm going to resolve my attack action. So I am attacking you for one mean. You have two defense on top of your zero fat. Yes. So you're A-OK. -okay. Yep. So nothing happens there. Okay. Uh, take heart goes away. Okay. Do you get anything for that condition fading? Nope. Okay. I sure don't. And then I'm going to draw a card. Hmm. 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 So you can only activate one goat. I can. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Matt. You were in a terrible position right now. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. You got totally outflanked. 
Okay. Well, I might have a trick or none up my sleeve. <laughs> you typically do. It's really frustrating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Mr. Blight. So when Mr. Blight activates, it gets plus one weird. And then I'm going to get two crazy. Okay. So I'm up to six crazy. So then I get to play a card. So I am going to play. Now, what do I want to play? Here, you can have the cute little guy. Brett, what was the name of the little token? Uh, that's Gaptu. <laughs> he's, uh, he's part of the uh, original Game of Grub. So if you pick up an original Game of Grub, if you pick, pick up the first edition of the original Game of Grub, you can get Gaptu. He's very cute. So, Apparently there are, it is only one edition of Get Out of Growth, but he's not going to be included in the picture one. <laughs> it's cute, but he's not that cute. <laughs> uh, I am now going to play Deathless. And Deathless means I'm going to give myself one damage. That's weird. Since I give myself a damage, I am going, uh, Squat is going to get plus one fat. And then damage allows or deathless allows me to give one gruff plus four defense. So I'm gonna put that on thumb. So, so he now has five fat. Um and then since I activated Mr. Blight, I am going to huh. You have two more crazy points if you want to play another card. I'm gonna have him I can't actually, unfortunately. I'm gonna have him attack. So Mr. Blight's going to attack Briggs. So you're too mean against my too fat. Exactly, and that's going to end my turn. Okay. Alright. Um, so, so I've got good news and I have bad news. Yeah. So the good news is your shepherd's not going to take me damage. Yeah. The bad news is Thump is going to die. Yeah. So when Thump dies, does that reset his stats back to the beginning if I resurrect him or no? No. no the stats just stay exactly how they are. But usually there were any mutations that were attached to Thump. Stay on him until he resurrects. Okay. Oh. So your attack resolves. Yes. You have five mean. I have five fat because of that defense. Yeah. Uh, which means that Thump is dead. Okay. But I don't take any damage. All right. Poor Thump. Poor Thump. He went Thump. Okay, so. Uh, congratulations, you killed one of my goats. Welcome I hate to you. Twist Gaming. Come for the board games, stay for the bad humor. Yay! <laughs> and we mean bad. <laughs> so, Anne, yes. uh, get on with it. That's <laughs> very aggressive. So, okay. Uh, Scrooge gets pushed back to the back of the uh, position where he was initially, so he's not attacking. Now, you're, uh, draw you're not going to draw that card because. Uh, no. Uh, but, this is, but this is a condition that just faded, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's gonna trigger breaks. He's gonna get one more mean. So his mean is now going from two to three. And I've put that other one in the um, discard pile. Yeah, um, the discard pile is gonna need to be face up just to like match this. Yeah, and. Yeah. There you go. Uh, bristle defense. So I. This is the beginning of my next turn, so this card would have to fade also. Okay. Yep, that one fades as well. So then Briggs, uh, when this condition fades, draw a card. So I'm going to draw a card for my Bristle Defiance. Yep. And then Briggs is going to gain another meme. He's going to go from three to four. You're really taking him off. It's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the only it's goat fine. that I can activate... Oh, I have to draw my card for it being my turn. Uh, I can only activate Briggs, so that makes that very easy. You get nothing for him activating. I get nothing for him activating. Except, yeah, he, didn't, he doesn't have any weird either, so. Nope, so I don't even get to, inc I don't even increase my weird on Brat, so I still have the same pot of five. So yeah, so one thing to point out, too, is that uh, because Screecher actually killed Thump, that attack was not fully blocked, so Brat's ability is not going to trigger. So, just yeah. keep it right, just pointing it out for those who might not have noticed. Okay. Matt, you're really happy for something that just got their butt kicked. <laughs> He'll be back, it's fine. Um, it could have been much worse. That's true. Yeah, it will be next turn, so you gotta do something about Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to 
play Ego. This is stinky. This puts me in a stinky position. Ah, yes. Stinky indeed. Uh, I'm going to play Ego Blast. Cause what does that do? Can. Uh, so when you play this card, choose a shepherd. I choose Brat. That shepherd gains two crazy. So Brat's crazy is going to go from five to seven. When this card fades, that shepherd's going to take one damage. So that's fine. Uh, so that makes turns my pot from five to seven. You use two of them. Right, I use two of them, so I have five left, so there's not really anything I can do. So what are you doing with Briggs? I'm going to attack Mr. Blight. Okay. Uh, you can only, you're, you've got an attack of five, of two, against my fat of two. Yeah. And then I have a mean of four against your fat of two. Mm-hmm. You're a mean person, yeah. We knew that, though. You're going to attack me for one. Squabble's got fat of zero. Actually, I know I like to attack. Okay, I know I like to attack, but I've got this attack coming in from squat, and I could use this turn to grow Squabble's fat by one and then fully defend from squat's attack. Yeah, Mr. Blight's attack and girl breaks. Yeah, that's what you can do. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And instead of attacking and declaring an attack, I'm going to use this turn to grow. You can only grow Briggs. Why? Because yeah, he's activated. Oh, darn it. Yeah. Exhaustion isn't activated. Only one good is ever active. And I can't, I can't grow. I have, to, I have to do the action with the active. Yeah, I'm not sure why you want to do that, though. So when it comes to resurrect, do you have to resurrect on, like, if, if I wanted to resurrect Thump, I would have to activate Thump in order to resurrect him? Is that how it works? No, uh, you can use any of your goats on your team. Just use their tactical action to resurrect them. Okay. Uh, but you can't actually activate the goat because they're not really goats anymore. They're top swimming. If they're dead. What was that? I'm sorry. If the goat's dead, you can't activate it. Okay. You said you weren't sure why I wouldn't do which. Uh, both Mr. Briggs's back by growing it. Okay. Because he's being attacked right now, and if he grows fat, then he survives. Yep. If you didn't grow your fat, if you attacked me, I would have killed you before your attack actually happened. Ah. So. Because the attack wins on a tie. Yeah. Okay, so then I've used my turn to grow, and I've grown Mr. Briggs' fat from two to three. So, my attack resolves, you're fatter than I am mean, so <laughs> that uh, ends that. So, I do not have any condition cards in play, so I'm now going to draw a card. All of my goats are no longer exhausted. Uh, so does Thump unexhaust here, even though he's dead, or...? Uh, technically, dead goats are just never exhausted or unexhausted, and whenever they come back to life, they're always refreshed. Okay, gotcha. So now, what I'm going to do is... Ooh, that's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to activate Squat. And when I activate Squat, his fat goes up by one. So he's at four fat. So I drew my card already, so now I'm going to play cards. Oh, uh, he's going to increase my weird by two. So I'm at eight. And then, let's see. I'm going to have some fun here. Hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Trying to, I have some, a few options here. I want to see which one's the best. So I'm going to play Globular Goo on Screecher. Yeah, good call. And that's going to mutate him, and whenever you declare an attack, uh, you instead destroy this mutation. So next time you declare an attack with him, you destroy that instead of declaring an attack. Okay. One point something out that in my defense, my card's not actually transparent. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it look like that. And because that is a mutation that I played, uh, Mr. Blight, his weird is going to go up by one. 
And then I am going to use this opportunity to resurrect Thump. There you go. Back in the game. Oh yeah. Uh, you played the you played the mutation man. You gave a uh, weird to Mr. Blight. Yes. Did you give your weird to Mr. Blight? Because yes, yes, mutation? I did. Yes. Okay. So oh, okay. it's your okay. turn because I did my activation, or my tactical action rather. And okay. so go ahead. Okay, so then I get to refresh. All three. All three of my guys. I'm going to draw my card. My, <laughs> my uh, ego blast fades, which means my shepherd needs to take one damage. <laughs> Frack goes from seven to six. Uh, ego blast can go away. Eagle Blast. Eagle Blast. <laughs> or call like an eagle. What? Call like an eagle. <laughs> it's not eagle blast, you shoot birds and so on. <laughs> shoot birds at the mutated goats. <laughs> that's, a, that's a completely different game. Or a completely different expansion. <laughs> so what are you going to do, Anne? Who are you activating? Huh? I huh? want... Huh? How does move work? So move means that when the uh, go you activated, which is uh, what did you activate this turn? I have not you yet chosen. You let him swap places, swap positions, but the go is chasing to it. I'm considering swapping Briggs and Squabble, since Briggs is my meanest goat against Squat. Oh uh, yeah, you could do that. Uh, However, you probably want to attack him where it's weaker rather than strong, but I guess it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Play to my strength, and You know you want to. So, I currently have seven weird. You play a bunch of cards. I could. You need to choose who you're activating it. I think that I'm. I think that I'm going to. I don't know. Analysis I'm paralysis. I know. I know. You're like a. Like a, a, a chest timer. Oh, no, a watch. Oh, yes. The tap, 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 tap. <laughs> no, I think I should make a, I should make a sideways play map for you guys. So I thought that everything's oriented properly on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, me and Matt were playing earlier, and he's like, I really hate this play, Matt, just because we're sitting side by side. And not across the table and from each other. And not across the table from each other, like a normal, normal people play. Yeah. It, <laughs> it forces us to play on a weird angle. Like, we're just like, oh, what's going on over here? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish that the uh, camera setup would be more complex if you uh, are actually sitting across from each other. I'm going to activate... No one, and end your turn. No, I don't think that that's how that works. <laughs> so, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I just realized that if I activated one of my grubs, I get more points in my weird. Yes. Crazy. The grub gets more weird, and she gets more crazy. <laughs> it doesn't always get more weird, though. Like... Briggs doesn't get weirder. Okay, I'm okay with this. Because Briggs is adorable. He's also very mean. He's pretty adorable. Yes, so is Squabble. Like, the mean ones are adorable. <laughs> I would bring them home and cuddle them. Okay, I am going to activate Squabble. Okay, so he's going to gain plus one mean. So his mean goes up to tree. Okay, because plus one mean when activated. Uh, I also am going to get two weird from that. It's going to move my weird from seven to nine. Mm -hmm. I am going to play, just double checking. They don't want anything. Okay, I'm going to play Bicker. Mutate Squabble. Whenever Squabble attacks, he gets plus one mean. This is a mutation card. Okay, so is that whenever he attacks or whenever he declares an attack? 
Well, uh, bicker is when he declares uh, declares he's an attack. So it's not when the attack actually goes through that he gets it, it's when he declares that he's attacking. Yeah, it's when he declares he's attacking. Okay. Okay, are you ready for this one? Go for it. I'm also going to play Copied Anger. And what does that do? When you play this card, place a Fury Mutation token on a Gruff. Okay. Okay. So a Fury Mutation is plus one damage on the attacks. I'm going to place that on uh, Squabble. Okay. Okay. And then when this card fades, I get to play a Fury Mutation on another Gruff. Okay. So they'll get plus one damage. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. This is just kind of hang out over here. I'm going to de- declare an attack on squat. Which card? Copied anger. When you play this card, place a fury mutation on a token on a growth. So then because oh, I... Oh, a higher value of the card I played earlier. So because I declared my attack, then his mean goes from three to four. Correct. Okay. And squats fat is four. Correct. Okay. All right. Cool. So that's just going to go there. No, actually, bigger stays on because it's, it's a mutation. Oh, it's a new. Oh, well. Yes. So that ends your turn. So now uh, I don't have any attacks to resolve, so I'm going to draw a card. Ooh, what is this? Oh, that's interesting. The point card? Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Thump. And when Thump activates, I am going to get plus two weird to him. So he goes up to four weird, and his mean goes up by one to two. So I am now going to get four weird, so I'm at 12 crazy. I got all the crazy. That is super crazy. That's super cray cray. So cray cray. So then, I am going to play Take Heart. When you play this card, you may destroy a Conditioner Mutation card. So I'm going to get rid of Bicker. I, Does my mean go back down? That's a. I know, but I just want that to go away because I don't like it. No, it doesn't cause your mean to go back down. That changes permanent. Okay. So. Then I am going to give Squat plus two defense. So he's now at six. And so that's four. I still have eight left. That's crazy. So then I am going to play Inoculate. And Inoculate is going to destroy a conditional mutation card. So I'm going to get rid of Fury. So that goes away. And then... Uh, uh, this gets shuffled back into my deck. So it doesn't go in the discard pile. My poor Fury. So then since I activated Thump, I am going to attack with him because you decided that Screecher is going to lose a bunch of fat and get mean. So he now only has one fat, so I'm going to attack him with Thump. <laughs> and that is oh, my turn. Okay. So, resolving my attack, Squabble's only now attacking with four. It is a fully blocked attack because you have plus two defense on top of your four. Indeed. That means that I get one more cray cray. So you're at ten. So I'm at ten. And then he, Squabble, goes back over here. I was really excited for my thing, and that was really not nice. You're welcome. That's what I do best. Um, I am going to activate Screecher. Okay, so you're going to gain plus one fat and plus one weird. So he will have two and two. That brings my crazy also to 12. No one cares about your crazy, Anne. I don't really care about my cray cray. Uh, I am going to draw a card because I've done this all out of order. Uh, if I have 12... What are you doing, Ann? I don't know. What are you doing? I just mixed up for a second there. Did Brett get her uh, crazy for getting fully blocked? Yes. <laughs> yes, she did. Oh, no. Try to try to share your 
uh, your career on both internets. Ah, the interwebs. Thank you so much. And you're just delaying the inevitable here. The inevitable what? You winning. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so you destroyed my Fury card, which means it didn't fade, which means I don't get to place another Fury card? You're right. You're a bad person on the inside. Yep. Well, it didn't. wouldn't fade. It's a mutation, so that would happen. Oh, the Fury is a mutation. I'm sorry. Your other card would not allow you to place another one. Correct. I'm sorry. You were right. Yeah, you're an awful person. Um, uh, sure. Here you get Mr. Goat. Oh, I like him. So what are you doing, Ann? I am... Now, is there a hand limit, Brent? Yeah, maximum hand size is seven. So if you have more than seven cards in your hand at the end of your turn, then you're going to have to discard down. How many do you have? I have three. Okay. I'm going to play Squabbles, Spite, Destroy, Condition, or Mutation card. I'm going to destroy Gobular Glue. Ooh. So you can take nice. that. And then Squabble gets plus one mean. Squabble is now five mean. And I'm going to play... Um, I'm going to play... Another squabble spite. Squabble gets six mean. And I'm gonna destroy your take heart thing. And then I'm gonna play uh, assault. Choose any growth that gets plus two damage on its attack. When this card fades, shuffle it into your deck. Um, if I'm going for plus two damage you're attacking it's a good that turn and two and you've got two my screecher is gonna die and i don't think there's anything that i can do about that oh wait i lied okay um i'm going to put that on briggs because I'm going to end up activating him next. And I wouldn't be able so to... So if you're going to play a card like Assault, yeah. you want to attack the very same turn that you play it, it won't be around the next turn because it's a condition. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that. And then I'm going to move Screecher and replace him with Briggs. You cannot do that. Why? I activated only, Screecher. You can only trade with adjacent. So you can only trade him you with Squabble. You know, there's a lot of rules here that I feel like we're not very, um... Brent said that before. The, 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 did I? Because I might have forgot that. Actually, uh, you did say that before. You know, back, though, but yeah, when you, when you use your tactical action, you can only move one space. But since I, I forgot to tell you this, I will tell you something else. Uh, you can use your tactical action to grow on Screecher. And I can grow his fat from two to three? Yeah. And that would block Thump's attack? Yeah. Oh, how about that? How about that? How about, how about that? that? Cash me outside. So my attack action gets resolved. You are now fatter than I am mean. And that uh, does not work. So then I get to draw my card. Hmm. Let's see. I guess these kind of, the action cards come off and go into. So I need to first activate my Gruff. I've only got Mr. Blight left. So he's gonna get plus one weird. So I'm gonna increase my crazy by four. So I'm at 16 cray cray. Hmm. These, these crazy limits are crazy? exponentially. Are they crazy? They're crazy, right, Ann? <laughs> it actually makes a really good point. This is something I actually really like about the game, which is that uh, your crazy curve actually goes up exponentially throughout the game yeah. instead of linearly. So you'll go from like one crazy to two crazy to four crazy to eight crazy to 16 crazy to 30 crazy. You don't go to 36 crazy because it maxes up to 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Squat's Revenge or Squat's Rage. Wait! Wait, wait. 
Why? We did something wrong. What did we do? You wrong? destroyed bicker and you destroyed destroyed fury. But you did not destroy copied anger. Copied anger was the card that gives me the second fury token. Correct. So I still get my second fury token. Correct. Okay. And that put, gives it plus one damage. So then I'm going to put that on to... Who did you play the first one on? Squ what do you mean? It was on Squabble, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, because it says on another card. Oh, 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 oh. I just want to make sure you weren't doubling up there, you cheater. And that's a... Condition card. So that means... Mutation, mutation, no, mutation. No, this, oh. this is a, a status. Yes. So... so... When this card fades, play... Yeah, so this is blah. Oh! I get plus one mean when one of my conditions fades. There you go. You're welcome, man. Thanks. So I'm going to play Squat's Rage, and I'm going to mutate... Did you activate it? Did you say? I already did, Josh. If you paid attention, you would know that. Mr. Blight. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to play... Well, I don't have to play that on Mr. Blight, do no, I? No, no, no. You activated Mr. Blight. Right. I was answering Joshua's question. So Squat's Rage... Is gonna. I'm gonna play it on squat, I guess. Um, okay, and that's gonna. Since it's a mutation, it increases Mr. Blight's weird by one. So then, since I have Mr. Blight activated, you have five, six damage. Oh boy. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to increase Mr. Blight's fat by one. And that's going to end my turn. Okay. Did you say what Blight's Rage does? Or did you just play it? Oh, no, he just uh, played it. I'm sorry, I did not explain. So what that is, is whenever I resurrect a, another Gruff, uh, Squat gains plus two mean. So he is uh, a defender. He, He's a refen revenger. Revenger or avenger? Both. Yeah, all of the above. What is going on right now? Yes. I don't know. And it's your turn. Just so you Candace know. Candace's gone lonely. Candace's so lonely. Looney. So She's lonely. gone loonly. Looney. Oh, so lonely. And what are you doing? I am going to activate Mr. Briggs because he is the only goat that I can He's not a mister. Mr. Blight is the mister. How do you know it's not a mister? That's just Briggs. Whatever. Could you just assume the goat's gender? <laughs> So you are activating him. You don't get anything for activating because him. Because he still got zero weird. So you get to play your cards and do your tactical action. Okay, so I am got a crazy limit of 12. Me. Whatever shall you do, Anne? So as a side note, my, uh, my wife, Virginia, is actually the artist for the game, so all these are... Oh, really? Yeah. That's fantastic. It's pretty awesome. I really do love the artwork in this. It's the perfect amount of cute and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put the cute and creepy together. Queepy? Queepy? Queepy. Did I give <laughs> Screecher... His plus one weird and his plus... Yes, because yes, he sure went from did. one to three. And, okay. Nice try, though, Anne. I was really trying. You should try to do the rest of your turn. I'm going to beat me? up Matt. Have you guys done I'm going to play yet? Assault. I did on... one damage to myself and Anne did one damage to herself. Are you playing Assault on Matt? I mean, he has enough to last a lifetime. So what is Assault? Do? Choose any Groff, it gets plus two damage on its attacks. When this card fades, shuffle it into your deck. Okay. Okay, I'm also going to play the Munchies, mutate any Groff. Whenever the mutated Groff attacks, you may destroy a mutation card. And I'm also going to play that on Mr. Briggs. And what does that do? Uh, I can destroy a mutation card when he attacks. Okay. So I'm going to attack with Mr. Briggs. Jeez, Louise. Okay. Uh, because I've declared that it's an attack, I want to destroy the... Squat's Rage? Yep. Okay. So you get rid of Squat's Rage. That's not very nice, Anne. I try. And you're attacking. You're going to wind up... Stop. 
Uh, you're going to wind up attacking for 5, 6, 7, 8 damage. Respectable. Uh, so, it is now my turn. I don't have any attacks to resolve, so I'm going to draw a card. Did you take damage? No, that's on my turn. That's on your turn. Okay. All of my either. gruffs reset. So then I am going to play... That. I like so, to let you know that Briggs is the most sane thing on the board. You're attacking five, six, seven, eight. Hmm, this is this is interesting. So I have sixteen yeah, this this will be fun. Okay, so I'm going to activate squat. Yeah. And that is going to give me plus two crazy, and it's gonna give him plus one fat. So I am now at 18 crazy. Um, I am then going to play Oblivion. And Oblivion is destroy all mutations. So that's gonna get rid of this one. Fury and munchies. And the munchies. So you're attacking for seven now. Hmm. Then I'm going to play Void, and Void is going to give me one damage. And whenever I take damage, Squat's fat goes up by one. And so now he's at his limit. Now he's at his limit of six. And I guess I then oh, get to. Right? Yeah, Squat's okay. who I activated. So then it also says destroy a condition or mutation card. So I'm going to get rid of Assault. It was not very nice. Yeah, I know, right? So then, Void goes away. Then, I'm going to play... This is fun. What am I going to do here? Um, I'm going to play Slippery Slime on Briggs, and that is the Mutated Gruff deals minus one damage on its attacks. When you resolve an attack, destroy this mutation. Okay. You're overdoing it. <laughs> I know. I know I am. I just realized that. And then I'm going to move uh, Squat and Mr. Blight. And that's there going to go. end my turn. I guess I didn't need to do that. That was just icing on the cake. But since that was a mutation that I played, um, Mr. Blight is going to gain plus one weird. So he's at his limit of six right now. That was, that was pretty good. That was really great at base of maneuvering. I tried. For something that was really going to be quite a hit. And now it's yeah. not. Now it's not. That was really good. Yeah, that was a good block. That was a totally good block. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we resolve the attack. I have the minor minus one from the slippery slime. This is going to be just. You're attacking for four. Destroyed. I'm going to be attacking for four against your six. My attack is fully blocked. Brat gets one crazy. Briggs goes back. All of my goats. Get and Lotus has been a lot of back and forth and not a ton of damage on Shepherds. That's actually fairly typical. What you'll see, though, is that both sides have grown to a point where uh, Matt's team is crazy enough where you can start playing really huge uh, abilities that can cause some serious problems. And almost every one of, uh, of Anne's attacks are going to be threatening to actually kill the Shepherd. So it's pretty typical with Gruff. Shepherds actually only get hit by an attack like maybe twice in the game normally. Like once or twice is all it takes. It's a pretty aggressive ramp up there. Yeah. Um. Here, where am I going with this? I am going to activate squabble. Okay. So I'm gonna get plus two weird. So I'm gonna go from thirteen to fifteen. Mm-hmm. That. Uh, I'm going to play Silent Screams, which is a nine-point card. I'm going to mutate Screecher. Whenever a condition fades, draw a card. Okay. Is that just my conditions, or is that all conditions? Yeah, when it says A or all, it means all. Awesome. Um, and I'm going to do Headbutt as well. Because you're a butthead? Choose any gruff that deals plus one damage on its attacks while this card is on pl in play. I'm going to play that on Squabble. 
Uh, I also got plus one mean when activated, so if we're going from six to seven. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to declare an attack on Mr. Uh, Blake. Okay. So nothing to resolve for me. Uh, I get to draw a card. <sighs> that was quite a noise. Yeah, it sure is. So... Oh god, you're attacking for a lot. You're attacking for eight. That's no bueno. That I do you have more of those ten hundred point cards you know, that I you want to don't, come out of? Unfortunately. Your so I am going to activate Oh, sorry. Just not you picking the table. Either Thump or Mr. Mr. Blight. You only have two choices, so <laughs> it's fifty fifty shot. I I know, I was just talking out loud. So, He's sensitive. I know. Um, so do I want the weird or do I want the mean there? So I think I'm going to activate Thump. And that's going to give me plus six weird. And he gets plus one mean. So I'm going to get six crazy. So I'm now at 24 crazy. I'm... Very crazy. Uh, and then I draw a card. Did I draw a card already? I did draw a card already. Um, mm hmm. 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 So I'm going to then inflict funk. And I'm going to play that on squabble. So you're going to get a fester mutation token. And I'm going to get a Fester Mutation token. I'm going to put that on Squat. Okay, so the Fester Mutation tokens is whenever the f mutated Gruff would gain stats, destroy all Fester Mutations on this Gruff. I'm set. sorry, can you play that on Screecher? I meant to play that on Screecher. Okay. Okay, and then I get a Fester Mutation token as well, um, and that's going to be going on Squat. Okay. So can you please hand me one of those? That's going on squat. And then... Well, then I'm going to attack... Or am I going to attack yet? Hold on. So you're going to be doing... 7, 8, 9... 8 damage. 8. And if I don't move that, I will have one health. So, yeah, sure, why not? I will leave it at that, and so let's see how this plays out. What are you going to do with Thump? What's your tactical action? My tactical action with Thump is I'm going to attack with him. Okay. And that will end my turn. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to resolve my attack on squ with Squabble. It is for eight points of damage against your three fat, which means your shepherd will get five points of damage. Correct. And Mr. Blight will be... And now, since I drop below my threshold, you are now going to get a Fester Mutation on all of your Gruffs. Ooh. Oh, snap. That's pretty... That's pretty vicious. That's what I try. Good okay. Do. Uh... Anne's gonna beat me. So now, my headbutt <laughs> card... My headbutt card is faded. Yes. I'm going to draw a card because of Screecher's... Correct. Mutation for that. I'm going to draw a card because it's the beginning of my turn. You also had a condition fade. Which condition? The one you just played. Since you had a condition fade, you would get plus one mean, but since he has a fester token, you just get rid of the fester instead. So does that make this fade too? Does that count as a fade? No, that's a mutation. No, a mutation still fade. I tried. Okay, so that gets rid of that one. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, you're going to be attacking for three points against Screecher's fat of three. Or fat of zero. Okay. I pulled my card for the beginning of my turn. Please don't crack your knuckles. It's an awful sound in my eardrums. I don't like you very much. <laughs> And it's your turn. You're gonna beat me. Are you happy? Are you happy with yourself? I think I am. I am going to... I don't know. 
I don't know. Whatever shall you do? Oh, I'm... Okay. I'm going to activate Briggs. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this. Oh, you're going to activate Briggs? Are you sure about that? Why? I don't know. I'm just making you second guess yourself. I don't like you very much. I don't get any additional weird from activating him. You're plenty weird for everyone. Weird. Oh, wait. Oh, but, oh, because I have Fester, I couldn't get my plus one fat or my plus one weird. Correct. That's true. Uh-huh. You're going to die, Anne. I think Screecher's going to die. You could swap him out with Squabble. I might. But I'd have to activate him. That's fine, because I don't want to lose that that silent screams. What am I more concerned about? Do I want to make sure that I keep silent screams, or do I want to get rid of Squat by attacking him with Mr. Briggs? You only have one card in your hand? Yeah, you're going to wind up killing me, so... Doesn't really matter. I don't know, that one card could be like instant death to the other shepherd. Yeah. Like that's the kind of card you tend to have in these moments. <laughs> you tend to pocket that and just hold on tight. Uh, do you have one that would kill her? You got, you got one that would kill her. Well. Do I? Oh, I don't have it. Maybe it's my next card. <laughs> Do something, Anne. I'm going to activate Briggs. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I hate you so much. So, you're activating Briggs. What are you doing with him? I'm going to play Briggs's... Is... Am I committing that to this? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I'm gonna play Briggs's Battle Bleat. So when you play this card, choose any. Choose a graph. Oh darn! Never mind. Other than Briggs. Darn. Never. Mind. Never mind. Okay. Then I'm going the other way. Fundamental. fundamental. I'm going to activate Screecher. That gets rid of Fester. I hate you. Uh, I get two more weird because I've activated Screecher. That brings my crazy up to seventeen. I am going to play the card Fading Secrets for seven points. Mutate Screecher. Whenever one of your conditions fades, shuffle the bottom card of your discard pile into your deck. And then I am going to move him with Squabble because my shuffle is stay. Interesting. Oh man, you pour Squabbles into the bus. Yeah. It's brutal. Squabble's going bye-bye right Squabble's now. Squabble's going bye-bye. So that's the end of your turn. Yeah. Beginning of my turn, yeah. I resolve the attack. So Squabble gets killed. Yeah. He had no fat. So three damage is going to bounce to your shepherd. That's okay. Uh, I draw my card. And then all of my goats on exhaust. My gruffs. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. Do you have the everybody but you dies card I in your hand? I wish that I did. So, I am going to activate Thump. And with activating Thump, I get plus okay. two weird, so he goes up to his max of seven. He's at his max mean, so I'm going to get plus seven crazy... Which means I'm at 31. Does it cap out at 29? 30. Uh, 30. 30? Okay. Okay, so then I am going to... Hmm. Doesn't matter if I do that yet, does it? So, can you move with a goat that's dead? Yep. Okay. The living goat just kind of kicks it out of the way. <laughs> that's so, a great visual. I'm gonna play palpitating warp. Warp. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna play that. I'm just gonna attack with thump. And that will end my turn. 
Okay. Uh, no conditions have faded, so I'm going to just draw a card. I... How did you already... Reset? Because I didn't have a third goat. Aha! That makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to activate Briggs because he's the only choice that I have to activate. Indeed. I am going to What are you going to do, Anne? You're going to gain a mean because you activated. Oh no, that's only when one of your cards fades. Never mind. I'm thinking of uh, Squabble. Dead squabble. Dead squabble. Who is not defending against Thump's three points of attack. Correct. And I can't move anybody into that position. Correct. Yeah, let's show a card. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you might be dead. If I resurrect him, though, he defends? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he does. Oh. But does he have any fat? Uh, except for he doesn't have a fat score. He has no fat. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! That's it. Well, play it out, Anne. Oh, I don't have anything. Well, what else are you going to do with your turn? I can't do anything. I could play Briggs Battle, Bleat, Ram, and Ram, and give... Oh, you totally could do that. I could, I could do that. I'd get a bunch of damage and a bunch of mean... Oh no! Oh no! What? Oh, this is uh, so Don't, sad. I sunburn. I don't eat. This is so sad. This is so sad. Oh no, sad. you have something that's gonna kill me right now? Okay, so I'm gonna play Ram. Which is? When this card is played, the active grub swaps places with an adjacent grub. But that, I can't, but that doesn't matter. Cause I've but, you can move again. <laughs> but you can move again afterwards. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> and then go there. Damn it. And then I'm gonna go there. Okay. Uh, while this card is in play, the active gruff deals one dam plus one damage, and then I'm gonna play. Um, then I'm gonna play. What am I? Who am I? Want to killing? Then I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Briggs. Battle Bleat, when you play this card, choose a gruff other than Briggs. When this card fades, the chosen gruff gets no, because then I, I can't attack me. When this card's played, the active gruff swaps places with an adjacent gruff. While this card is in play, the active gruff deals plus one damage. So I'm going to play uh, Ram again, and he's going to go there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now he's got plus two damage, and Squabble is there against your dead goat. Uh, and then I'm going... Two. This is other than Gruff Briggs, uh, and then I'm gonna attack. So. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Do I want to resurrect? Or do I want to attack? We need to resurrect first. If you resurrect, fat count is three, but Squabble's got a mean of seven. If I attack, five to one is. Four. Four, five, six, and you just need one? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna attack. Okay. So you attack. It is now my turn. I no, you gotta resolve your attack. I've right. declared my so attack. So I am going to attack you now, and your fat is equal to my mean, so you die. Wait! Wait! I'm taking back my attack. Uh, 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 you took your hand off of it. No, wait. You took your hand off. I'm of taking it. back my turn. <laughs> no takesies, backsies. You snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> no, I want to take it back and get Squabble. Shut up. No, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, so you're resurrecting Squabble? Yes. So I attack you and wait, you wait, still wait, die. Wait, 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 wait. If you attack me, <laughs> there's no way that I don't die. You know, no one would never. Unless you up your don't back. Don't you just shut up, Josh. <laughs> oh, that's a really great idea. Oh, God. <laughs> So I grew some, so I grew. Yeah, you grew some. <laughs> so now I hit you, and you are fatter than I am mean. I like so. that. It's a very, it's a very 
salty way to put it. So I'm going to draw a card. Okay. I really, <laughs> Salt really everywhere. don't like you. Really don't like you. Matt. Don't touch me. <laughs> I don't get my plus one damages. Yeah, I, I see that. Oh. Why don't you get your plus one damages? Because oh, those are resolved next turn. Mm. Mm. So, what I'm going to do... What am I going to do? I have no idea what I'm going to do. You're going to activate now. squat. Because that's the only thing you can do. I'm going to activate... Yeah, I'm gonna activate squat. Squat can't get any fatter than the R. So is. I'm at my max. Just like here. you can't get Stop any fatter. Stop hitting oh, me. You're so <laughs> I hate you. That makes it that much more enjoyable. Um, so I'm gonna use this opportunity to up squat's mean by one. You should do or that. Or that's at the end of my turn, so I'm gonna wait for that. Um, I'm going to. Well, oh, that wasn't the end of your turn. No. So, you have all that mean there. Hmm. Jeez. Oh, Jeez Louise. So, I'm going to play... Famine. And Famine is gonna go on... No, I'm not gonna play Famine. Oh, goodness. Uh, this is hard. I'm gonna play Inflict Funk. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna inflict the funk. So, Anne, you're gonna get a fester token on Briggs. Okay. And I'm gonna get a fester token on Squat. So, Squat's really smelly. Um, oh! Oh? No, never mind. You okay there? Yeah, I'm good. So, then I am going to use this opportunity. To do what? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to. A oh boy! Oh boy! You got, a, you got a second chance at life. What you got? This is rough. It's gruff, huh? Uh huh? <laughs> you got a, you got a reprieve. So I'm going to play. Probably not the right move, but I'm going to play Palpitating Ward. So when you play this card, swap the positions of any two allied gruffs. So I'm going to put Squat in the middle. And then I'm going to attack with Squat. Yeah. For one. For one. My one whole damage, but... <laughs> Squabble's got oh, well, zero and I've got... Three. Correct. Okay. So that was your tactical action. Correct. Uh, both of my ram cards fade away. And what happens when those fade away? Well, I have both fading secrets and silent screams. So I've got two. Whenever a condition fades, draw a card. One, two conditions faded. Uh, whenever one of your conditions fades, shuffle the bottom of your discard pile into your deck. So one, two for each faded condition into my deck. I'm not so great at shuffling. There's only like five cards left. Yeah, that's what I was You would think that may make it easier. That, that looks shuffled. Yeah, the red sliders do look really good on the game. It I really asked makes, you if they sh that, that looks shuffled. I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm responding to something in chat. It okay. really pops in the... Uh, Are the cards in a random order that you don't know? Yes. Then they're shuffled. Cool. So why do you shuffle for 35 <laughs> minutes? So and then put the trap card on top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Fester is on Briggs. Uh, he was going to get plus one mean when one of your conditions fades. Now, I had two conditions fade. So Fester would go away when the first condition fades, but I would get the plus one mean for the second faded condition. Yeah, that's right. In that right. case. So that brings uh, brings this mean up to six. Okay, all of my goaties. Nah. Refresh. Refresh. Take a quick peek at what I got. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Ow. ba dum ba dum ba Whatever will you do, Anne? You're gonna mumble to yourself. Yes, That's I am. interesting. Just do it, Josh. Do it, <laughs> Josh. Um, I can't. Damn, Sam. I can. I can do that. What you doing, Anne? I'm going to activate Screecher. Okay. So you activate him, he gets plus one fat, plus one weird. Okay. So his weird's gonna go to three, his fat's gonna go to four. Four. Four, and my thing's gonna go to 20, because I had 17. I'm gonna go up the three weird from Screecher. Just 20? Just 20. I'm not as weird as you, obviously. Crazy. Cray, you, cray. So 30 is the limit, or could you go up to 39? 30 is the limit. He said it twice. You yell at me about adjacent tokens. Who's adjacent? You're a weirdo. If you attack me for one mean, I'm going to take one point of damage. That'll put my life at two. Which is still one more than yours. Correct. If I attack you with Screecher, you have Mr. Blight that possibly could defend with three fat if you just so decide to resurrect him. That would mean two points. <laughs> resurrect him? <laughs> Damn near killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if that still gives two points of damage that would go through to your shepherd. Correct, and that would kill me. And that would kill you. Um, the other option you could take after you use your attack is to switch him with squat, which has six fat. But... You get a chest on it. Yeah. Eek! Um. Da, na, 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 na. That's the Jeopardy theme song, Anne. Just in case you were wondering. They usually play that. I, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> <laughs> they usually do that when people are taking too long, Anne. Eh? Eh? I hate you. I hate you very much. So is your new strategy to just uh, take it out one, one point of damage at a time? As long as I don't die, it's a viable strategy. <laughs> I'm going to attack with Screecher. Okay. Because you can't buff this at all. He looks like a buffalo. Okay, wait. Go. I'm done <laughs> with that. It's just going to take one point of damage. There's nothing you can do to buff it. Okay. Uh, we kind of sound like the Smurf song. LOL. Eh, maybe a little bit. Okay. I'm going to play Briggs Battle Bleat. Which is? When you play this card, choose a gruff other than Briggs. When this card fades, the chosen gruff gets plus one mean. Okay. So the card's got to fade for him to get plus one mean. That is correct. That's fine, I think. What? And is that the end of your turn? No. Uh, then I'm going to play Insight Violence. Uh, when you play this card, play a Fury M Mutation token on an enemy Gruff. When this card fades, play a Fury Mutation on an allied Gruff. I don't want to play these cards on right you, now. I don't, think, I don't think this is what I want to do with my life. Play. You should totally buff my Gruff. I don't think that I want to do these no. ones. <laughs> but I'm going to play Protect. What is that? Uh, and the active Gruff may immediately swap places with an allied Gruff and gains plus two defense. While this card is in play, 
I'm going to put him with Squabble. That gives me a free move. Uh, I get two, plus two defense. I mean, that it's one damage. And then I'm going to use my tactical turn to resurrect Squabble. So you're not attacking? No. Okay. I don't think so. So my attack happens. You are much, much fatter than I am mean. So that goes away. All of my gruffs refresh. I draw a card. Um, okay. So then I am going to play Globular Goo on... Oh, jeez, your gruffs are really strong. Wait. Um, Too late. This, this palpitating warp Oh, yes, I'm sorry. That phase. So I get to swap two places of my allied gruffs right now. Not that it really matters all that much, but... Do I now draw the cards because his card faded? Or do I have to wait until my turn? Uh, you do it right now. Okay, and so I'm getting two of these is going into the deck. I don't even know what the heck was on the bottom of my deck, so there's that. And then... Oh, no. So I am now going to, to draw play... This card, wait, do you have anything else that faded? No, okay, fine. So now I am going to activate Thump. So since Thump is activated, I'm going to get nothing because I'm at max. Um, I'm then going to play Famine on Squabble. And that's going to make it so that way... Uh, he now gets minus one fat. He Whenever a mutation play, is played. Play a mutation instead. Right. Which he can't actually lose oh. fat because that is minimum. Sorry, I'm actually I'm gonna change that up. I'm gonna play that on Briggs. So I'm gonna play that on Briggs, and then I'm going to play Globular Goo on Briggs. So now he is globular. I'm sorry. Globular goo is whenever you declare an attack, destroy this mutation instead. Okay. So I made the card globular goo just so I could hear him say it. <laughs> <laughs> so then, does that? So now he loses a fat because a mutation was played on him. Yep. Okay. And then I am going to attack with thump. Okay, your turn. You're happy with that? Yes. Okay, um, do protect is now going to oh, fade. I did that wrong. I should, I should have So I'm different. going to draw, take a card from the bottom of the deck. I'm going to randomly put it into my deck. Didn't put it on the top. Uh, and then I'm also gonna draw a card from the deck. And now I'm gonna draw a card because it's the beginning of my turn. And Briggs is going to get him one mean. Okay. One mean. Okay. All right. I need... You get Mr. Goat. He's very cute. What's his name again, Brent? The, uh, the current player marker? Uh, his name's Got to. Gap tooth. So, Anne, what are you doing? Um, I. So, uh, Gap tooth is actually the name of one of Thor's giant battle goats. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. From uh, Norse mythology, uh, Grinder, which is another one of the goats in the base game, is uh, another one of his goats. And apparently he would like he would wipe right into war with these goats, and then every night he would eat them, and then they would come back to life the next day. That's that seems very resourceful. Yeah, <laughs> it's efficient. Yeah. I'm going to play Terror. When you play this card, choose any gruff. The chosen gruff cannot be swapped while this card is in play. I'm going to play it on Squat. Ah. So you can't move your shield around. It's a good move. I'm going to play Zippy. 
And what is oh, Zippy? I haven't, I haven't decided which. Yeah, you didn't declare which gruff okay, you're attacking. I'm, so. I'm, I'm activating. Squabble. Squabble. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I get, oh, it is his, oh, he gets one mean when activated, so he goes from seven to eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I get two more weird, so I'm at 22, from 20 to 22. Uh, I played Terror. I'm going to play Zippy. What does uh, Zippy do? When you play this card, the active Gruff swaps places with an allied Gruff. Uh, so I'm going to... Yeah, I should have... Switch him with Screecher. Put that minus fat on the Screecher, so that way I would have killed your Screecher. Yeah. Um... I'm going to play Briggs Battle Bleat on... Squabble? So when you play this card, choose a graph other than Briggs. When this card fades, the chosen graph gets plus one mean, so nothing now. I also have another one. I'm going to play that on Screecher. Um, I don't want to play you gotta wrap this up, man. these either. Okay, so if I... I'm going to attack first before I resolve. So if I attacked... Who would I have active? I have Squabble. Squabble active. Squabble's got a mean of eight. You have a defense of six. You can't move anywhere. So I would indeed be attacking you. And I think I'm happy with that decision. Okay. Yeah. Wait, let me think this through. Oh, Jesus. Eight, six, two points to you. You just need one. You can't move. You're going to attack me for three. Well, okay. Yes, I'm good. Okay. So yeah. uh, my attack resolves. You are fatter than I am mean, so nothing happens there. I draw my card because there's nothing else that I can do, right? So the terror gets uh, resolved on her turn because it's a card she played? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I've been kind of muting and dangerous to see this when I pick up static from my mic. No worries. So then I'm going to play... The one card you have in your hand? This is a stupid card to play. But it's the one card you have in your hand. I can't use it. Oh. Um, which means that... Oh boy. It's so probably the cost of a point of damage. <laughs> Uh, no, that is it. So, Anne, you're going to wind up beating me right now. Are you sure? Because last time we did this and I was about to die because you were going to no, beat me. No, there's nothing else that I can do here. So I am going... Well, I didn't cheat like you did. So I am now going to <laughs> activate... <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to activate squad. Uh, I don't get any benefits from that. You get too weird. I have... I've been at the max for like four turns now. Oh, that's right. Um, the one card that I do have is... Cardiac Rhythm, which allows me to draw a card and then discard a card. So I have no... <laughs> I draw a card. It's great. Just oh, this is super it. helpful. <laughs> Too bad I can't keep it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so then, since I... Does it say may or must? Uh, then discard a card. Oh, okay. So unfortunately, I don't get to keep it. Um, squad is active. I can't move him. Uh, I cannot grow him because he's got fester tokens on him. If I attack with him, it doesn't really matter. I could resurrect Mr. Blight, but it doesn't matter because Squabble is currently attacking Squat, so I'll just say I'm attacking. Turn bounces back to you. You attack him. Two damage goes through. I have one health left. I'm dead. Okay, but wait. I want to resolve all my cards, too. Okay, so battle. And, this one and, resolves, and, and this one and resolves, and, and this one resolves, and then I get to draw all these cards. Okay, you're good. All right, so that was the head-to-head -head of Gruff, Rage of the Trolls. You win it. Congratulations. It took you three oopsie-daisies, takesies-backsies, but, you know, it's fine. It's about the journey, Matthew. Don't stop believing, as they do say. All right, so... And you want to swap, and then me and Matt will do a fight against the troll and not take as long because we don't have AP? 
hate you both. Why so, are they going to bring me down? Never going to bring me down. So go be TPN, number two. So Josh is going to jump in now, and we're going to do a head-to-head, or a uh, co-op oh. uh, against co-op a troll. troll. So we'll keep the same uh, team, I'm assuming. Make this easy? Yeah, that Yeah, because yeah, you're familiar with one. that team. I'm familiar with this team. And the brat won. The, the brat The, the brat won. did win. I came closer than I thought I was gonna, going to at the end. So congratulations, Anne. So how does so this, this work? This is your first game against the troll. Yes, this yes. is our first game against the troll. Okay. So you're gonna want to uh, take the troll character card and set him into one of those three uh, middle positions, okay. facing one of the players, whichever one of the players you choose. So this is our troll, Guildfisk. Okay. He's mildly see through. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of transparent. Guildfisk gets plus two defense when attacked from the side. Threshold, Guildfisk gains three rage and one fact. He's not transparent there. Uh, that's another point, guys. Just, I know you can't see me anymore. Now I'm the disembodied voice of TP. Uh, so our card cam does have green screening so that we can use it on our overlay. If you want to see the colors in full color, make sure that you're checking them out on the board cam. Um, maybe Matt, you can hold them up a little closer to that cam just to get a nice. That's that's the words. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> maybe you could not. Maybe just there you go. that's good. <laughs> Brent's like, I'm gonna get my game out there. I'm gonna get some publicity for it. I've already funded, right? But you know, I want to reach some. So we want to reach some stretch goals. Make the game even more awesome. Let's show it on Twist Gaming. Oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did this. These people are insane. Insane in the good way. We're just going to make crazy. all his backers think he has transparent cards now. Yes, yes. That should be one of your stretch goals there, Brent. Transparent cards. Transparent cards. Just the green parts. Yeah. Transparent. I like it. I still like the hangry. <laughs> All right, so how does this work, Brent? Okay, so the, uh, can you guys hear me right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so the, the troll's got a little deck of mini deck, five cards, which, there you go. Uh, we can just kind of keep those sort of off camera until we play one. Uh, but, uh, uh, you'll notice, actually, let's go ahead and flip that up on the, the, the card cam. That, that would be good. So each of the, um, the, the ability cards has got a series of five abilities that will trigger based on the troll's rage. So every turn the troll is going to activate, he's going to gain a rage, and he's going to uh, uh, face the active player, and then he's going to do all the things on his card that he has rage for. Ah. So Rage is his ability, it counts for the purposes of the cards and growth as mean, as crazy, and as weird. So if you have anything that modifies mean, weird, or crazy, you can use it to manipulate the, the troll's uh, Rage score. Okay. So, and uh, you're going to want to switch out your turn for the co-op Okay. You got that, Andy? Yeah, let me put this in the camera. So the yep. turn order. Yep, so the troll, just like a goat, is he'll declare attacks, but the attacks actually won't deal damage right away. They'll deal damage in the beginning of your next. So, uh, or at the beginning, yeah, at the beginning of his resolution, it's the, the top player's turn. Then the troll gains range and faces the active player, and then there's being okay, so let's go ahead and actually do that. So as, uh, as the player's turn, you're able to actually place the troll wherever you want on the board. So what's the benefit for where he is on the board? Uh, just like with the, an attacking go, you want to have a strong go in a position to block him in case he attacks you. I'll put my fatty there. And speaking of fat, the, uh, the troll has got three stats. It's got a reach score, a fat score, and a life score. So his fat score works like a uh, goat's um, fat score. It's the amount of damage he defends each turn. 
The only difference being that the troll obviously doesn't die if you deal damage equal to his spat score. However, he does lose life if you exceed his spat score, and uh, once his life is down to zero, you win the game. And uh, just like the shepherd, he has a threshold, and when his life drops below that mark, his threshold ability is going to trigger. I think he gains three rage and one bat. Yep. So uh, the trick to kill Fisk is you don't want to take your time. You don't want to wait this one out. If you take too long against Gilfisk, he will crush you. So uh, you want to raise him down, but you want to be careful about that threshold. You don't want to cross that until you're ready to kill him. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, yeah. So let's uh, kind of move that off. And then uh, the troll will always go first. So the uh, troll resolves his attack from the previous turn, which obviously doesn't have any. Uh, we'll skip the uh, gain rage. Actually, he'll actually go ahead and gain one rage on his first turn. So he'll move his slider up one tick, not one point. So it goes from goes zero up. to zero. Yeah, it goes from zero to zero. And then we'll flip over a behavior card and see what he does. Okay, so the behavior card here for zero is Guildfisk will attack as his tactical action. Yeah, now you'll notice that uh, he has a lot of different things and. Uh, he has some of those that are conditions, those are the blue ones. He's got some that are uh, action cards, uh, action abilities, those are the red ones. And just like the mutation cards, he's got mutation abilities, those are the transparent ones. <laughs> <laughs> Which in real life are the green ones. They are the green ones. Now those uh, abilities can be modified just like um, uh, a character's cards. So if he plays a condition that you don't like, you can play a card that destroys a condition to get rid of it. Okay. All right, so he's going to attack as his tactical action, but his range is zero, so he's not really doing anything, but we'll go ahead and push him up so he's threatening to go to the position ops All right, so let's go back over to the turn order sheet real quick. Okay, so the turn order sheet. Yep, and uh, both players go ahead and uh, start your turn by drawing five cards. Okay. You know, Josh, maybe we can get Brent to come on and just explain all of the rules from here on. I mean, he's audible, he articulates, he's... That's, that's not very kind. This, this. No, no, no one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> I, have, I have puppies, too. You know, just for puppies a lot. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, the player resolution phase. So just like with the last, um, in the uh, player versus player mode, your attack will resolve at the beginning of the turn. So one catch with this is that all players' attacks resolve at the same time. So if you declare an attack, it resolves right after the troll um, behaves, but not after your your partner's turn. It's a little bit of a catch and it'll make sense as soon as we do it once. And then your draw phase, which uh, you actually don't skip because you weren't the first uh, person to act the troll was. So whoever is controlling Brad, go ahead and draw a card. All right. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and activate one of your gruffs. Alright, so I... Which you can't see. The oh, oh, sorry about that. So... There you go. I'm going to activate one of my gruffs. And you could only still attack him with the one directly in front of him, correct? That's no. Right. I, you can't... Right. I thought... Oh, you, that's actually not right. So you can attack control from any of the positions on the board. However... Uh, the troll has got an ability right there at the front that says he's going to gain an extra, I believe it's three defense, or two defense, yeah. if you attack him from the side. Two defense. So, it's two, so yeah. if I so, attack from the side, it's two. Yeah. So the troll's really massive, so you can actually hit him uh, from these oblique angles, but you, unless you connect solidly on him, you don't do as much damage. Okay. All right. So I start the game off with one weird, not or one crazy, not 21. Let me reset that. And I'm missing my health counter. It's too bad you can't add your own personal crazy to that counter. <laughs> um, that would mean you just win all the time. That's true! <laughs> How do you play? If you're an you start with 30 crazy. These are good <laughs> rules! See? Important. What are you doing, Josh? Alright. Uh, I'm gonna activate Sky Reacher. Sky Reacher? Screecher? Screecher? I yeah. can't talk, so we already know this. So I get plus one fat, plus one weird. So you're going to increase your crazy by one. I'm going to increase my crazy by one, so I'm at two crazy. And are you playing any cards? And I might play a card. 
might play a card. I don't need defense. Does the butthead want to play headbutt? What? Yeah, I think I'm gonna play headbutt. But that's a really good choice to it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna play headbutt, so the, uh, it deals plus one damage on this attack, and I'm gonna do attack with Sky Reacher. So is there a Screecher? Screecher. I don't. I put it on a Y in there for some reason. Let's talk again about the okay. uh, unseen. My words. Sky Reacher. I might change for me. Okay, so you're attacking with Screecher, so it bounces back to my turn now. Yeah, now it's uh, now it's actually the uh, um, the troll's turn at the top of the the card. So okay. Uh, oh. So let's go ahead and pull that guy back up. So uh, basically, the troll activates in between each player's turn. Get a new card. So uh, I mean the the turn order. Uh, the turn order. Oh, turn -order. sorry, the turn order. Oh, okay. So it it tick tocks back and forth. Yeah. Right. So uh, he resolves his attack. He does zero damage to this creature and gets bounced back. And then uh, the troll will gain rage. Okay. So that's one range in the case of uh, a co-op game like this. If you're playing solo, uh, normally you're going to want to um, give him two rage, but if you're just learning, it's okay to give him one. Okay. So he gains a rage, and then he's going to face the active player. Now, in that case, that's that's you, Matt. Okay. Uh, and then now he's going to have a behavior face, and he's got one rage, so he's going to do a lot more. So let's see what he does. So now it is Guildfisk shifts left as his tactical action. If he cannot shift left, he will shift right instead. Now, when, uh, when you play a behavior card, you actually do everything that he has crazy for, and you do it from the top down. Oh. So first thing he's going to do is he's going to play a Fester Mutation on the, on the top. So, so Squat's going to get a Fester Mutation. Uh, Screecher is. Oh yeah, no, Squat, you're right. Okay. So Squad gets yeah, a Fester that's... Mutation, and then he's going to bounce to the side. Yeah. Okay. So that ends his turn, though. That ends his turn, and he's not attacking. So if he didn't use his card to attack, that's, that's it for him. Okay, so it is my turn, so I draw a card. Hmm. So if I play a Fester Mutation on him, would that basically eliminate him getting his Rage that turn? Yep, that's exactly right. And uh, uh, Guildfisk, he's a troll, and trolls count as both gruffs and shepherds. So if you have a flip card that says play a fester mutation on a gruff, that can go right on to the troll. Okay. So let's see what I'm going to do here. Huh, so he's got one fat. So I'm going to play... I'm going to activate... Uh, just a second, actually, really quick. Yeah. So um, just kind of like how I said before, the uh, attacks resolve, all attacks resolve um, for players during the player resolution phase when you're playing a co-op game. So Screecher actually hits right now. Oh, so I hit now? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going so for you do three. Four damage. Okay, four damage. To his side. Yeah. To his side. So he has plus two defense and he has one fast, so he's three, so I'm going to do one damage to him. Yeah, you're only doing one damage this time. Okay, better than nothing. All right. Yep. And then headbutt goes away. So it's yep. a good thing you headbutt him. Okay, so then I am... What are you doing, Josh? Does this happen on my turn, when my turn restarts, or all the it's conditions? It actually happens on this turn, so it's different in a co-op game. Okay. So it's actually happening on Matt's turn here. Okay, um, so all the conditions fade on the next player's turn. Yeah, yeah in the case of a co-op game. Now, Briggs though, is still going to get triggered by that, because it got one of your conditions faded, so he's going to go Yes. Get it. Awesome. Hmm. So Briggs has some damage. So can Briggs attack the troll now? Or it's he has to be at turn. least one space away? I'm just asking okay. in general. Yeah, yeah, in general, you can't. Okay. You don't need to be one space where you can totally attack from that position. Oh, okay. so that's still considered the side? Yeah. Okay, so then I am going to activate Thump. And activating Thump gives it plus one mean and plus two weird. Um, I'm So then I'm going to up my crazy to three... Since I upped my crazy to three, I am going to play... Uh, Slippery Slime on 
Guildfisk. Guildfisk, and that is a mutation. He's going to get minus one damage when he attacks, and then when he resolves an attack, it destroys his mutation. So he gets minus one damage now. Since that's a mutation, Mr. Blight gets plus one weird. Uh, that is one. I still have two. Um, then I'm going to play Flesh Burn. And Flesh Burn, I'm going to damage myself by one, which is going okay. to give Sky, uh, Squat a fat, but he has Fester, so it gets rid of Fester. And then this gets in play, and then when that fades, someone else will get a fat. But he also... Oh, when that comes up. So that was the fat from before. Correct. That he would have yep. got. Right. Because you took damage. Okay, and then I am going to use this opportunity to increase Thump's... I don't want to do mean or fat. Well, right now he's got minus one attack. Right. And he's only got one attack. Right. So you're fine with the one fat. But just for the future, I guess? Because he's going to give himself plus mean. So I'm going to do plus fat, just because every time I activate him, he gets plus one mean. Okay. So that's going to up by itself. And that will be the end of my turn. So it jumps back to the troll, troll now. So he draws a new yeah, card. His rage goes up. Choice, I think. Yeah, so his rage is still one. It's just up a tech. Yep. So first he will attack as his tactical action. Then Guildfisk shifts to the op shifts to be opposite the Gruff with the most defense. Now, when he does that, he's only considering the side that he's facing. And if he's facing the Gruff with the most defense, he's going to shift to the opposite another Gruff that has the most defense. He has to shift. So it would be Screecher. Yeah, Screecher yeah, has the opposite Screecher. So he jumps over to Screecher, and then he's going yep. to attack. He set it up. He doesn't attack yet, though, right? He declares his attack. Uh, yeah, he declares his attack. He's attacking. He's uh, just running across the bridge to try to get the creature. Okay. Function. So, Josh, it's your turn. My turn. Oops, I... That's okay. And uh, we actually have the player resolution phase. That's going to cause a uh, flesh burn to fade. So that's going to go away, and it's going to give uh, Squat that extra point of time. Yeah. So I'm going to activate Squabble, so he gets plus one mean. Okay. I get two weird. Let's get so weird. four. And Dan? What you going to do, Josh? Now, if you didn't want to do anything, one thing that's kind of cool that you can do in the co-op mode is you can actually record the crazy that you didn't use on your turn, and you can actually play those cards on your partner's turn. Okay. During his play card switch. Oh, really? Oh, that's what the... That's what the track on the bottom is. Ah, that's cool. Alright, so I'm going to play Mutate Squabby. Or, or Bicker. So I'm mutating Squabby, so whenever Squabby attacks, he gets plus one mean. That's nice. Um, I still have three left. Um, that really doesn't matter right now. I'm going to play Ego Blast. When you play this card, choose a Shepherd. That Shepherd gains two crazy. When this card fades, that Shepherd takes one damage. I'd actually like the damage if you don't... That's what I was going to ask you if you would like yeah, that. Yeah, I would like the damage. So I will I will do that. That doesn't happen. That happens when this fades. Okay. and that, But it's going to fade as soon as it jumps back to me. Yeah, but you get two crazy now. Oh, okay. So I get two crazy now. Yes. This is good. And then I have one left. I can't do anything with that, so I'm just going to attack with Squabble. I Squabble can't... Squabble yes. will get a boost to his attack when he does it. He gets a boost to his attack, but he does not wound him at all because he's attacking from the side. There's always a chance that uh, Guildfisk is going to jump in the way of Squabble's up. Oh, yeah. that's true. So I'm going to attack with him. So now that he's attacking, I get that plus one mean, so he's at three mean now. Okay. And that's the end of your turn. That's so it jumps turn. back to the troll's turn. So he spins around to face me, right? Yep. And then he's going to gain plus two. Oh, wait, no. First, he attacks. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Screecher. And he's got zero attack, right? He's got zero attack because of Slippery Slime. So that's going to go away, right? Right. That leaves. Yep. And so then he's going to turn around. He gains 
two defense, and that's it. Because he does not have enough rage to do anything else. Okay, so he's right. two defense now. So he just sits there. Uh, yep, he just sits there and turtles up. <laughs> okay, so... So Squabble's going to attack now. His three's not going to beat his five. Yeah. So now I am going to get the plus one... Or I'm going to get damaged one from that one mm-hmm. card going away, right? Yeah, so this one card's going to go away, so you're going to take a damage, and then Briggs is going to get a plus one main because of... Oh, yeah. The condition failed. Or uh, faded. Okay. And then and you get plus yeah, one fat. I get plus one fat with squat. Fat squat. So, Dan... So we get to see the synergies of our two shepherds. Yeah, exactly. And the monsters. So now I get to draw a card, and... Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I'm going to use that at all, but, you know, Whatever. So now I'm going to activate Squat. So Squat is going to get plus one fat. So he is at four fat. He is a hefty beast right now. Uh, I get plus one weird. Or, so I'm at six crazy. And then I'm going to use this opportunity to up Squat's mean by one. Because he's, he has the potential to be my heaviest hitter. This might be a good opportunity to record your crazy because um, you've got a lot of crazy you can potentially use on your partner's turn. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I can't do what I wanted to do. Um, actually, so I, before I increase my stat, I'm going to play Cardiac Rhythm. So I'm going to oh, draw a card and then discard a card. So I get to draw that card. And then I'm going to discard a card. And I'm going to discard Squat's Rage. Because I don't think I'm going to wind up using that. Disappointed in it after uh, after last game. Yeah, (laughs) and and took away the excitement for me. What? Uh, So that's going to end my turn, and I'm recording four of my crazy. I gave you something to aspire to. So that means that I can use my crazy on Josh's turn to play... A card? card? Yep, yeah. Okay. okay. So, Troll's turn, he's going to turn around at me. And yep, then... I gain one more rage. Oh, I gain one more rage. So, his zero action is Guild Fist gains a rage. All right. Yep, so, he gets one more rage. So, he's, so he's at, at two, two rage, rage now. now. So, yep. then, unless an attack is declared on Guild Fisk, Shepherds take two damage when this ability fades. Okay. Yep. Oof. Okay. So... That happened. There's no attacks declared on him. Uh, the end. So if oh, we don't. Okay. If I don't declare attack on him, and then yeah. Guildfisk will attack with his tactical action. So he's going to attack. Okay. So he's attacking for two. Right. And Screech is three. Yeah. So I'm okay. So that's there. Yeah, that's there. And it is now your turn, Josh. Right, so I'm drawing a card. So you're going to want to either attack him, destroy that card, or take a trouble of damage. All right. So, I have to activate Briggs. I don't get anything for it. Um, yeah. He's got... Hmm. Do it. Do it. I don't get any weird from that, so I'm at four weird. Who did you activate? Briggs? Yeah. Okay. You could just use this opportunity to up Briggs' as weird, so at least when you activate no, him again so in the future. No, I, I, we need to attack. I need to attack. Oh, that's true. So I'm going to play Ram. You'll also probably get crazy when you attack, because he's almost certainly going to get pulled blocked. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to play Ram. And what does Ram do? Ram is when this card is played, the active Gruff swaps places with the adjacent Gruff. While his card is in play, the active Gruff deals one damage. So I'm going to switch Briggs and Screecher. But you don't have enough fat. I'm, I'm good. Are you sure? Because yeah. I can help you out. No, and then I'm going to play uh, Bristle Defiance. Oh, nice. Choose any Gruff. Yeah, if it gets plus two defense, when this condition fades, draw a card. Yeah, I was going to do that too. So I play that. So he has plus one damage now. And he has plus two defense, so he's at four. Correct. Is yeah. that your version of I already thought of it? Me? Yes. Yeah. 
Because I was going to have the exact the same, same card. card. Yeah. So I'm going to attack with him. So he's attacking for four. And so, has four defense. So he can eat. He's not going to take any damage. And he can hit him back. Hopefully. So he does not. We do not both take two damage. Yes. So it is now back to the troll's turn. All these get shuffled back together now, yep. right? Well, he attacks. He goes back. He doesn't do anything. He's going to flip so towards he's facing you. squat. And hopefully and he doesn't rage. And yeah, he gains a rage. Yeah, he gains a rage. Thank you. Stop gaining rage, Guild Fisk. It's not nice. Uh, so he is going to... He's going to attack as his tactical action. Okay. If Guild Fisk fully blocks an attack, the attacking shepherd takes two damage. He... You That's not good for you. Actually, you should break through, though. Yeah, I should break through. Yeah. As long as he... Yeah, he doesn't move. And then destroy all conditions in play. Those are both so conditions. So you don't get that extra ramp damage, and you're not going to draw the card off the of Bristle Defiance. Yeah, and sucks. I won't get the plus one mean from the condition. Nah. Oh, oh, we got plus two mean from that. So okay. he's just going to attack. So he set the attack. Uh, so then... It's the end of his turn. That's the end My of his turn. My attack goes. Yeah, your attack goes off now. I do two damage to him. Correct. So he's on the five. Okay. One more damage, his little thing triggers. And you are no longer attacking. It's the beginning of my turn. Yes. I have nothing scheduled to go off, so I draw a card. And I have to activate Mr. Blight right now. So he gains plus one weird, so I'm going to gain two crazy, because he was at one. Now he's at two, so I'm at eight. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to inflict my funk. On him. So that means that he's going to get a Fester Mutation token. And then okay. I am also going to receive a Fester Mutation token. So I will put that on Thump. I'm going to let you do the damage. Just, you that's, do the damage. that's fine. And I can actually get rid of those Festers. Okay. And that uses all but one of my things. So then I am going to... Like, I don't want to declare an attack just because of... He has to be in front of me, and he's probably not going to jump in front of me. So... Who did you activate? Mr. Blight. Um, I'm just going to up his weird by one. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of my turn. Okay. So, so. back to the troll. He attacks squat. Yes, he attacks squat. So he does not gain his rage because of Fester. He doesn't get a rage because of Fester. So Fester goes away. Fester goes away. He doesn't do anything because you have a fat of four. Right. And so now he's going to draw a card. He flips over to you. Yeah, he's going to flip over to me. And he gains one rage. <laughs> Still two max, though. Uh, unless an attack is declared on Guildfisk, Shepherds take two damage. Okay. And then Guildfisk will attack. So he's going to attack... Breaks. Breaks, which is not the best. Well, all of your... All my guys are on reset. reset right now, because that's now the end of his turn. Yes. I draw, I draw a card. And what you going to do, Josh? Seems like you guys have already got the hang of this. Good job. Yeah. We work well together. It's just that we don't like working well together. <laughs> we prefer to beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> All right, so I need to declare an attack. Correct. So I don't want to activate Briggs. Briggs is going to die. Like, I can't stop it. You can't do anything about it? Unfortunately, I don't have enough of anything to do anything about it, unfortunately. So I'm going to activate Squabble, because Squabble is going to have the best chance of Doing some damage to him. Okay. So Squabble's gonna get me plus one mean. I get plus two crazy. So I'm at six. So you activate the Squabble. Yeah, activate Squabble. And Dicker is whenever you attack with Squabble, you gain yes. plus one mean. So are you playing anything? 
Yeah, I was just debating what I want to play. So I can play every card in my hand right now. <laughs> well, not together. Not together, but... I'm just going to set up some trick. That'd be an awesome turn. Um, I'm going to play Assault. Uh, choose any Gruff. It gets plus two damage on its attack. When this card fades, shuffle it back into your deck. So you're doing that on Squabble. You're doing that on Squabble. He's going to attack, so you can get plus one... Mean for that. Right. So if he, if the troll jumps in front of Squabble, he's probably going to die. Yeah, if he jumps in front of me, he's probably going to die. Um, get, so I'm hitting for seven right now. Oof. All right. So. All right. It's you end of my turn. Your attack. It's the end of your turn. Troll's turn. Troll's he turn. Hits Briggs. Briggs goes bye-bye. How much damage? He does two damage. What's Briggs' is fat? Two. So you don't take any damage. So I don't take any damage, but... Okay. So... He flips over to me. Yes. And now uh, his rage goes up by one. So he's at three. He's at three now. Ooh. Okay. So now zero. Play Fester Mutation Tokens on the Gruff opposite Guildfisk. So Squat gets a Fester Mutation Token. Guildfisk shifts to his left as his tactical action. Awesome. Uh, then Guildfisk deals two damage to the Gruff that is opposite him. So he kills Thump. Oh. So Thump is dead. Yeah, that was toast. And that is the end of his turn. So that might be the end of Gilfus, period. Yeah. It is the end of Gilfus. So Squabble so goes up. It goes to my turn, so Josh resolves oh. his attack action. He does five damage plus two from his yep. assault. Uh, Guildfisk <laughs> has five health and one fat, so he does not have enough, so Guildfisk is dead. Yeah, you guys are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see that taking a turn for the worse really quick. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Excellent work. You know, we tried. We tried. So, so that... this is like the easiest of the, uh, of the... They break up as we unlock them. So it'll get Guild Fisk and then Snark, and then they, they get tougher and tougher as you go. So, But you guys did an excellent job of taking them apart. Thank you very Good much. Point. So, TP, can you take over TP duties? Oh. And can you jump over here? Uh, you have some questions to ask, I'm sure. And then after that, we'll get into our honest review section of the game. So that was the co-op. No, no. you're Side a large effects. human being. I am a large human being. And no. that means you have to get sit. up, Josh. He doesn't, he doesn't He's think. He's not chivalrous. I mean, it gets done. I got your it's chair. It's the most complicated. I got your chair. <laughs> okay, Anne. <laughs> I'm back! And I'm bigger than ever! See, I like this layout you're, more. You're bigger than ever? You're fatter than ever? Goodbye, Josh. I think Josh wins that award. And we go. <laughs> do your thing. All right, Brett, we had a lot of fun playing this game. Um, and I've had a lot of fun getting the opportunity to meet you both at, uh, I'm gonna mess it up again, BGG Con. Not Gen, <laughs> Not Gen Con. <laughs> Uh, in Texas as oh, shit. well. This year we'll hang out in Chicago. Oh, oh, that'll be awesome. <laughs> We're, you're going to be at Origins, right? Yep. Check out at Origins. The next two conventions for us. And, and we got uh, to. I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm going to be seeing a whole lot of Brent this year. Yes. <laughs> Brent's, follow, Brent's following me around. It's just, you know. But I'm awesome. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Uh, but we got to meet briefly again and we caught up at Gamma. So you are a regular face on the gaming convention circuit. The first thing that it, uh, caught my eye specifically about your booth is your setup. Everything that you guys do is so artistic. And then when we got to do the interview at BGG Con, which you guys can check out that interview on our YouTube, bam, bam, bam. Uh, you mentioned that your wife really has a big hand in the artwork for the game. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Her background? Yeah, so uh, Griff actually started as an art project for her. She she oh. had the sketchbook and she was, she had decided, you know what, I want to do as many different mutated monster ghosts as I possibly can. And at the same time, I was designing uh, uh, a combat card game and we were like, this would be awesome together. This is like a chocolate and peanut butter scenario, so we uh, look at your eyes light up. Card game about monster codes. So yeah, it's uh, we we were both longtime um, artists, veterans of the video game industry, 
uh, we worked on uh, League of Legends, Darksiders, and uh, a bunch of other stuff, and then, then transitioned into making games for ourselves. Fantastic. Very cool. Brent, tell me a little bit about your personal background in the gaming industry. Tell me a little bit about what got you into games and what made you decide that, you know, you were coming up with a competitive, uh, competitive card game. What led you to design your own game? Well, I think a lot of it, honestly, it's, it's frustration with magic. I think there's a couple, like, there's a whole genre of games that are like, man, magic, magic is really old and outdated at this point and has a lot of kind of crusty artifacts so um i i i'm one of those people that was like i i like magic i liked it when i was a teenager but now that i'm an adult i need kind of uh, a game that i don't need to constantly buy pot packs for i'd like a game where i get to play every game and don't get like just mana screwed out of, out of existence and not have to play at all uh you know i and i really like the idea of combat and so it kind of came into this uh, sort of situation where I was looking at what what do I feel like is wrong with Magic and what do I love about other games? So I was looking at uh, definitely a League of Legends at the time and I was looking at uh, Final Fantasy Tactics and trying to make and choose components of all of those uh, different ideas that I thought would make a, uh, a good game. So from League of Legends, we kind of borrowed the, the idea of the three lanes and, uh, and then so you're fighting in these three different lanes trying to protect uh, your shepherd, and then from uh, from from Final Fantasy Tactics, picking up this idea of like area control spell effects and uh, and and actions. And honestly, like I had always thought, like when I was playing Final Fantasy games, uh, I love this. I love playing these big uh, spell effects and stuff. But what I really wish was I had an opportunity to to interact and interrupt these uh, these different effects that are going on. So uh, what I wanted to do was provide the kind of uh, interaction that you get with a game like Magic or Final Fantasy, but but you want to interact with everything by uh, just through the nature of a split combat turn. So, um, but yeah, I uh, started off the gaming industry working at uh, Disney and uh, transferred from there into uh, a company called Vigil Games that made, and they worked on the Warhammer 40k MMO and worked on that for a year and then moved on to working on Darksiders 2 and then moved on from there to working on League of Legends, the art update for Summer Shift and then uh, ran my Kickstarter, uh, it did really well, the original uh, growth one, and then I've been kind of just, my life has been full of monster goats since then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I think, Gaptooth came to help me with the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I absolutely like, enjoy this game. I was really excited to be able to uh, finally get my hands on it and, and to play it. Uh, tell me, for people who are looking to make their own games, people... I, the frustration with magic seems to be a common feeling for a lot of people in the industry and it's spurred a lot of people that I've met to decide to move on and do create their own games. If you were giving advice to somebody who was deciding to go out on their own and try and develop a game and go the route that you did and uh, put it up on Kickstarter, can you tell me one thing that you learned during, because you've put up three Kickstarters, right? This is your third? Yeah, Rage of the Trolls is the, the third crop Kickstarter for Studio One. What is one thing that you wish you had known before you put up your first Kickstarter? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, the one thing I wish I would have known before, I, 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 I have an answer that I totally want to give, but it's like super niche and esoteric uh, that all yeah. the developers would totally want. But, um, uh, has to do with manufacturing, like you don't want to over manufacture, you want to keep a really close eye on your inventory and don't over create your inventory. And uh, and then the other thing would be that, uh, that game development is something, the best way to prepare for game development is to work in the games industry. There's somebody that will pay you to actually make all the mistakes that you're going to make uh, in your first year of development. Might as well do it on their dime rather than on your own. Yeah, uh, you have so, so. you have the perfect background for that, going from all the different game companies. I know some people take it as a hobbyist and move right into trying to develop, and that's, that's an excellent piece of advice that, hey, you want to get your feet wet in the industry... Look. Yeah, graduate into being an entrepreneur. Don't uh, I, at least I don't recommend starting into it right off the blue. There's so many things that that you can learn for free without uh, without all the risks. So I, I I actually like that idea. 
And then, yeah, and there's another thing of just uh, wanting to make sure that your your life is in a position where uh, where you can take these kind of risks without it being super negative impacting. Because even though all of my other Kickstarters have done really well, um, depending on the situation that was happening in my life at the time, they might have been disastrous because of different things that were going on. So I tried to make sure that you know my life was in a low risk scenario before I, I dove into trying to be starting a business. Amen to that. What are some of the most frequently asked questions that you get about uh, Rage of the Trolls specifically, or took my gap? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one question is, what does Gap do? <laughs> no, Gap Tooth is my my co-interviewer. I, I he and I have become BFF. Uh, what is one of the frequent? What are some of the frequently asked questions that you get about uh, Rage of the Trolls or any of the Gruff games that you want to make sure that anybody watching this playthrough video, you now have your captive audience and you want to make sure that everybody watching knows. Hey, listen, I know this question comes up a lot. I want to make sure that I have the opportunity to clarify or explain or talk about this thing yeah uh, uh kind of jokingly but I, I always get asked every single time i always get asked the question and it cracks me up every time you actually asked it in the last game which was uh does all mean all <laughs> <laughs> it sounds <laughs> ridiculous when you say it like it that does. <laughs> <laughs> um, all all of it. you know why because a lot of because a lot of game designers you no, I, I held gap too oh, okay. as I dropped my hair tie. Priorities. Uh, <laughs> priorities. Um, some game designers don't take into consideration the differences between may, must, all, any. And there's sometimes there's assumptions that aren't really for the game. So I feel like that's one of the questions as a gamer. I don't know. There's, it's like a gray line unless you get Do you, you know what you're talking about when you write the cards? Yeah, that's <laughs> not <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> uh, the other thing I get asked a lot, it's actually like really practical questions like, can you sleep rough with normal size sleeves? Uh, and the answer is, uh, yeah, all the ability cards fit in normal size sleeves. Uh, the gruff cards themselves, the longer format cards, they use days of wonder sleeves, uh, 65 by 100 millimeter sleeves, and they work for that. Um, uh, other questions I get asked a lot. Um, yeah, uh, mostly those. Mostly like, uh, do you have a, like a bigger shinier box for you to put everything in? And I do. <laughs> Actually, uh, BCW makes this really cool. Like, if you have all three of the games and you want to carry them all in one box, uh, I love this one. It's uh, for BCW. It's called the Vaulted Deck Box. Talking with them about making a custom rough one, but it fits everything super fancy like that. Nice, nice. assembly. But, yeah, those are actually the most common questions are like, what's up with deck sleeves, and is there a box for everything, and does all mean all? And I literally get asked, does all mean all? <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't feel you're alone. You're not the only one, Anne. Yeah, no, it's literally every single game. I've always got asked. I'm does not all, all of the audience that asked the question. Does all mean all? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other questions I get asked every time are, and we covered them actually during the playthrough, but... Uh, when a girl gets attacked, is it lose fat? And that's because people kind of expect it to behave like hit points and not awkward, but right. it's armor and it doesn't drop when you get hit. And uh, same thing with crazy. And that's why I have that like kind of prepared response about craziest forever. It's like diamond. Because <laughs> <'Cause laughs> I say it like 50 times and every single kid which know that. <laughs> I'm sure that's ingrained in your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do this with your fun bread. And then, and then, yeah, and I always get asked, like, what does Gap do? Uh, and, and there's actually creative things that people have done with them. Uh, of course, you have, like, that hobby of people that, um, that like, just paint them up, like, uh, those are probably painted awesome Gap do. Uh, oh, it's super cute! <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's adorable. I didn't paint it. The, the Denver Brothers painted that one. And that was uh, Chris that, uh, that painted that one, and it was super awesome. Uh, some people spin it to determine who goes first, uh, and whoever is facing gets to go first. Like a top? And, uh, yeah, like a top. <laughs> and then other people use them like if they're having a hard time tracking, like if they have a lot of exhausted goats and they want to remember which one's active, they just stick a gap on the active goat to track uh, 
which one is which, and you can use it as like the active player token too if you're playing with a multiplayer game. We have uh, unofficial multiplayer modes that exist. Where would I find the rules for said unofficial multiplayer modes? Uh, they are on the Studio World website. Under, oh, there's a tab that says multiplayer modes, and I am watching you guys on Skype rather than on uh, Twitch? Twitch itself, so I, uh, I can't actually look at the, the, the thing. But that is why right we have Twitch Proxy. Say hi, Twitch Proxy. Hi. Nicole's going to go ahead and grab that link so that she can make sure that she puts it up in chat for the super yeah, secret. Yeah, slash growth, and then there's a tab that says multiplayer rules. So but you can also get a whole bunch of cool goodies off of the studio world page, including we had this contest for whoever spread the word about uh, growth. Every five people that did it, we didn't lock any uh, Facebook icon for, uh, uh, for growth. Oh, oh, that's actually cool. a contest that we just started right now. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're unlocking during our age campaign is this goat named Grinder. It's a spiky goat. He's gonna get a legendary skin, and uh, uh, we initially we're gonna make a funk, uh, funk food version of him where it's all hustly and gross. Okay. And a couple of our backers were like, no, you know, we need to send our thoughts and prayers over to Gat Dude. We're gonna make a, or uh, Grinder, we're gonna make a hashtag of, of Cure for Grinder. And so currently we have a contest going on of uh, uh, either your, whoever, does the most hashtags of Joe Brinder. If that's the most, then he gets cured. And if you, the most hashtags is uh, uh, inflict the funk, then, uh, <laughs> then he's going to stay punkified. <laughs> so it's a, a, a horrible, horrible cut that's going on right now. Guys, inflict make sure you're funk. no. Make sure you're posting with Cure the Grinder. <laughs> cure for Grinder. Thoughts and prayers. Change your Facebook icon to to Grinder hashtag. There we go. <laughs> Josh did it. I'm so proud of you, Josh. I'm also assuming one question that you often get is, how long did it take you to grow that beard? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I've had the beard for a since week. I had it. It's about a week and a half, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I just shaved this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my five o'clock shadow. <laughs> So tell us a little bit, you've got some really cool stretch goals coming up. You've got new trolls, you've got new shepherds, you've got new goats, you've got legendary goats. Mm -hmm. Was there anything special or different you wanted to make sure you did with the stretch goals this turnaround? Well, definitely the goats. I actually really like what it does to the campaign because we are uh, the uh, trolls on this because we basically have bad guys that we're trying to take down. So the, the campaign just isn't a campaign of building money. It's a, it's like a game. It's like a story of like, how many of these trolls can we take down before the campaign ends? So uh, today, just uh, just before the, the campaign ended, we, we beat Heartless Snark, and now he's part of the game. And now we're recruiting uh, a new shepherd called uh, Dr. Acrid. And then uh, later on, we're, gonna, we're trying to take down Khan the Immortal, this giant. Horrible, horrible, spiky, uh, spiky troll. And the so, new shepherd was created by a previous backer? Yeah, actually, there's a couple different ways to create shepherds. Um, uh, Brad, uh, the shepherd Brad was actually created by a world championship winner. And if you win the world championship, you actually get to design a shepherd with, uh, with Studio World. Uh, another way to, to create a shepherd is actually to back the shepherd tier. So, um, at, uh, if you go to the Kickstarter page, uh, we have just the one left, and our, our highest tier of the Kickstarter campaign can actually design your very own shepherd uh, based on, on yourself. So uh, last uh, during <laughs> during Clash, we we made this awesome shepherd named Armor, and and he's he's one of my favorite uh, favorite shepherds. He's so cool. And uh, yeah, Armor was just the name of the guy that unlocked it, and. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's it's Shepherd. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. I like it. You guys... And then the, uh, Ooh, the yeah. one more way you can unlock a Shepherd is we actually have this program called the Shepherds of Woe, where uh, it's, uh, you can go to our website and sign up for it, and then as you run events or post uh, stuff on, uh, on social media, including like fan art or fan fiction or anything else like that, and report back to me, you earn points. And at the end of the year, whoever has the most points, uh, we make a shepherd out of them. That's, oh, that's really awesome. cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, and you actually can earn like cool stuff, like exclusive uh, goats. Like there's a goat that's uh, called Mulch, who's literally our logo for our company. 
you can get that code for Gruff and get t-shirts and other swag and stuff. And it's uh, totally free. You just uh, sign up for it on the, on the campaign and do stuff you would have got done normally, play Gruff and talk about it online. Panda, are you going to sign up the Twist Gaming crew for the program? Of course. Done. <laughs> done. Sure. Look who's going to get all the swag. I'm going to be wearing a Gruff shirt next time. You're going to have to pry nice. it out of my cold dead hands. That's easy. <laughs> You're cold and heartless already. You've got oh, that thanks. stuff done. <laughs> Step one, done. <laughs> Guys, do you have any more questions for Brent that I didn't think about? I, I think mean, I've already, thought of everything. I thought of you all thought the of. questions. Now, is that all or all? <laughs> 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 That's what the new hashtag is going to be. Hashtag does all mean all. I like it. <laughs> hashtag gap <tooth. laughs> All right, so we do not have any more questions for Brent then? All right, good. All right, so Brent, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be doing a soft sign-off now and going into our honest review section where we like to talk about our favorite points of the game, uh, what necessarily wasn't our favorite part, and what we would change if given the opportunity. Uh, so we're going to do that in just a second, so guys, stay tuned. If you're watching video on demand, go find that video. I promise it'll be good, too. Uh, but thank you very much, Brent, for joining us. This is Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Anne. I'm this is. Excuse me, you stepped on Gap Tooth's outro. So rude. Say goodbye, Gap Tooth. <laughs> and I'm Josh. And you're Josh. Okay, and thank you again, Brent. We really do appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. This was a fun time. This is great. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> goodbye.